It is the game in college football in Northern California each and every year. The fight for the axe, the big game, Stanford versus Cal, and it is next. Timeless sports memories sometimes take almost no time at all. And though decades pass, they remain forever etched into our minds. There was uh, only four seconds left and the, t and the players took control. Prior to the play, I know Richard Rodgers had got a group of guys together and just kind of said, hey, don't let, the, don't let the play die. The kickoff came right to me. and At that point, I was thinking, I'm going to score a touchdown. So I get the ball, take a few steps, and that's about as far as I got before I realized, hey, there's three, four Stanford guys running right at me, and I, I don't have a lot, I'm not going to get very far. Ball comes loose, and the Bears have to get out of bounds. Rodgers along the sideline, another one. They're still in deep trouble at midfield. They tried to do a couple of... The ball is still loose as they get it to Rodgers. They give it back now to the 30. They're down to the 20. Oh, the band is out on the field. He's going to go into the end zone. He's going into the end zone. Will it count? The Bears have scored. The Bears have won. Oh, my God. The most amazing, sensational, dramatic, heart-rending, Exciting, thrilling finish in the history of Who knows football. what magical California moments will be football. revealed today <laughs> as one of college football's <laughs> most storied rivalries is renewed. Live from Memorial Stadium on the campus of the University of California, it's the 105th Gridiron Clash between the Stanford University Cardinal and the California Golden Bears. ABC7 Sports presents the 105th Big Game, the battle for Bay Area college football supremacy. Buddy Tevens firing up his kids as we welcome you to Berkeley, California for the 105th edition of The Big Game, one of the longest and best rivalries in college football. It is Stanford versus Cal. How you doing, everybody? Larry Beal along with Martin Wyatt. Martin, what a difference a year makes. Last year, the head coaches in the big game were Tyrone Willingham and Tom Olmo. They're both gone, and these programs have undergone some major changes, complete turnaround in Cal, and it really all started the day that they hired Jeff Tedford. Yeah, Jeff Tedford brought order from chaos, brought in a new offensive system, and somehow instilled confidence in senior quarterback Kyle Bowler, who had struggled for three years. Now he's one of the best quarterbacks in the country. Bowler is thrown for 26 touchdowns in this wide open offense. He's got a chance to become Cal's all time leading passer today. He needs just 335 yards to catch Troy Taylor. So Bowler is probably Jeff Tolbert's, Tedford's biggest fan. Uh, just having a year with him, you know, I feel like I've, my confidence is back. You know, in the three years that I was at Cal, my confidence was shattered. I mean, it was, it's tough going through four and seven, three and eight, and then one and ten. And to be a, conf to be a good quarterback, you need to be confident. And, you know, that's one of the big things that Coach Tedford's came in and, you know, I trust him, he trusts me. Um, he's worked on my mechanics and fundamentals, just everything about my game. It's just been awesome. On the flip side for Stanford, this season has been a real struggle for first-year head coach Buddy Tevens. The Cardinal coming in with a 2-8 and eight record today. Yeah, new coach, new system, and a freshman quarterback in Kyle Nider to lead this, and that's equal, hey, a lot of mistakes and a lot of errors. But maybe now with the season basically under their belt, it'll all come together here in the big game so Stanford can finish on a high note. Stanford, they've owned Cal in this series recently. They've beaten him seven times in a row. No team in the history of this series has ever won eight straight. Luke Powell, he was the man last year for Stanford with two touchdowns in this game. And Luke told me just a few minutes ago he is ready to go to try and beat the Bears again. Getting set for kickoff in Berkeley. We're back in just a moment. Well, welcome back to Berkeley, and this place is packed as we count down to kickoff in the 105th edition of the big game. Mike Schumann will be roaming the sidelines and countryside apparently today. Mike up in tight water. What's going on up there? 
Well, Larry, you told me I had the best seat in the house today, but I didn't realize it was up here on Tightwad Hill, which Sports Illustrated says is the best place to watch a college football game outside of a stadium. Well, there's 24 seniors on this Cal Bear team that have never won a big game and have never had a winning season. They hope to kill two birds with one stone today, and of course, we'll have the kickoff for the 105th version of the big game when we come back, and I'll try to find my way back down to the stadium. Welcome back to Berkeley. Getting set for the 105th edition of the big game. You see the series history right there. 54 wins, 39 losses, and 11 ties as Stanford has had the edge, especially recently. Here are the coaches. For the first time since 1972, both head coaches in this big game are new. Buddy Tevens, Eugene Francis Tevens III, <laughs> if you prefer. That's why they call him Buddy. Yeah. And here is... Jeff Tedford in his first season in Berkeley, a 6-5 record, former offensive coordinator at Oregon and Fresno State, has turned this program around fast. Well, Larry, uh, Stanford won the toss, but they deferred, so they're going to kick off here in the first half so they can receive in the second half. Uh, of course, uh, kicking off now, of course, is number 39. Eric, Eric Johnson. Johnson. Back deep for Cal. Number eight is LaShawn Ward. And James Bathia is back there with him. And LaShawn Ward, of course, is a game breaker. This guy had a 94-yard kick return against Arizona. Uh, he can do it. He's one of the big play men as far as the Cal Bell Bears are concerned. Stanford trying to put a positive finish on a 2-8 record thus far, while Cal comes in at 6-5, trying to lock up their first winning season since 1993. The Keith Gilbertson era. Those guys are ready, and we are ready as Johnson puts foot to leather on a short kick that Ward bobbles at the 10-yard line. Juking his way out to the 20, and Cal will have it first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. Stop on the play by Gary Cobb. Bears led by quarterback Kyle Bowler, a senior playing his final game for the Bears. He's had a tremendous year. Three-time Pac-10 Player of the Week needs just 335 yards to pass Troy Taylor as Cal's all-time passing leader. And we saw him in warm-ups, Martin. The guy has he's a He's got rocket. a cannon, absolutely. And he's really worked on his mechanics, so his accuracy is so much better. This year. The first play of the season under Jeff Tefford, Cal ran a trick play. Coach said he didn't expect anything too funky in the opener of the big game. Bowler on first and ten. He's throwing the deep ball. And he has the shot. Almost a great catch. Can't hang on at the 25-yard line of Stanford as Cal tries to strike quickly. Colin Branch retreating defensively to try to make the play there. Well, LaShawn Ward had two steps on uh, uh, Colin Branch, and, and the, the ball was thrown just a little bit. Uh, Good protection on that play for Kyle Bowler. Up front, the strength of the offensive line is on the left side with Mark Wilson and Scott Tercero. Most of the game, Cal will go with a three-wide receiver set. Jonathan McConan, the leading receiver, they'll mix it up on the ground with little Joe Igber. Second down and ten for the Bears, who tried to hit the home run on the very first play. They'll swing it out to McConan. That's a gain of six. Drew Kaler, junior from Maryland, in on the stop. Stanford defense, they play a standard 4-3, led by number 99, Big Matt Leonard, a defensive tackle. They'll rotate 11 guys up front on the down line. Linebackers young and athletic, led by Jared Newberry, a sophomore from Minneapolis. Colin Branch, the lone senior in the secondary, nurturing three sophomores around him. It's really been on-the-job training for the kids back there this season. Third down and about three and a half. Bowler as flags fly down the middle. Had McConan, but knocked away at the last second by O.J. Atagway. And we'll see what the flag is. It looks like a, a movement or, or some kind of a penalty in the offensive line. Yeah, it is. It's a procedure penalty. Illegal right. procedure. Cal's offensive line, one of those big guys moving. False start. On the offense, five yards, third down. Pac-10 officiating crew, Jack Foyer, the referee, giving the call, so it'll be third down and nine. 
What's important for Stanford in this is, is they've got to start fast. This team has had so many bad things happen to them in this two and eight season. If they can just be in the game for a quarter, uh, then their confidence will rise. Third and nine for Bowler of the Bears. Play action. With his hands. Right at the 40-yard line. I believe it was Jeff MacArthur. MacArthur had just come in for LaShawn Ward, and boy, that was a first down. There was really nobody around him. That's just a drop. A little wobbly pass. It came off kind of funny, but uh, still, we should have had that. So Cal hugs the ball away with Tyler Fredrickson. Luke Powell at the 40 yard line with some running room and brings it out to midfield. And Stafford with excellent field position to start out here. Well, this is what uh, Buddy Tevens wanted for a Stanford team. They, they made a stop. Uh, so his election to take uh, to kick off the ball and to receive and not to receive worked out for them. So they got great field position. Stanford offense led by redshirt freshman quarterback Kyle Matter. It's his fifth start of the season in place of the injured Chris Lewis. Seven touchdowns and eight interceptions. And they come out in the shotgun here on first and ten with Kerry Carter and Casey Moore, seniors in the backfield. Inside give to Carter. He's going nowhere. Loss of a couple yards on the play. Marcus Daniels in the backfield quickly. The offensive line for Stanford hurt by the loss of guard Paul Wynack, but tackle Quam Harris. He's big time, 6'7", 308 pounds. Backs and receivers. Watch for number five, Teo Johnson. Teams have basically been double-teaming Teo from the second he gets off the bus. But if he gets single coverage, Stanford <laughs> will go to him. Carter, the single setback as Stanford goes with a double tight end look with Johnson in motion. And Matter will roll that flag fly, and this play does not count. And it's another movement again on the offensive line. And so they've got, that's going to go back. Yeah, another procedure penalty. Maybe, you know, a little bit of nerves, some jitters. This is a huge well, game for these kids. This is most of the Stanford players, their first big game. If you look at them as far as they're they've got a very young team and they're coming in two and eight uh, and they, they don't want to be the, the team to lose the axe I mean, they none of these guys have ever lost to Cal think about this the last time Cal beat Stanford Tiger Woods was a freshman <laughs> on campus in Palo Alto second down at 16 Again from the shotgun. Matter, a little hitch to Luke Powell. Knocked out of bounds by Jameel Powell. It's Powell versus Powell. Yeah. We, you can see they're not taking any chances, but they do want to get the ball into the hands of the guys who can make a play. The Bears led defensively by senior Tully Bantican coming in. He has 12 sacks on the season. Three seniors at linebacker, Hosey Daniels and Nixon, all playing in their final game, hoping to finally beat Stanford. And in the secondary, it's Namdi Asamoa, the standout at corner. His brother plays for the Cardinals, so we got a little family feud working today. Last play was a pickup of seven, so third down and nine now as Matter works almost exclusively from the shotgun here. With time to throw. It's got Taylor Johnson. That's a first down catch at the 40-yard line of Cal. James Bufia on the coverage. Boy, he got a bad mark, Larry. That's inside the first down marker. I don't know if they're going to give him that one. I thought it was a bad mark. Well, just outside, he did get the mark. It is a first down. And there's a big, big play guy, Taylor Johnson. How do you guard a 6'7 guy? you got to give him room because he has great speed. 6'7", 245-pound sophomore from San Diego. Teo, Stanford's leading receiver, coming in with 36 catches, seven of them for touchdowns. First and ten, Stanford, their opening possession here from the Cal 40-yard line. Corona hitch to Ryan Wells. He's got room down the sideline. Breaks a tackle. Inside the 10-yard line, Ryan Wells, the senior from Middleton, Ohio. That was a well-conceived play, well written out. I mean, Ryan Wells just went inside uh, Luke Powell. And they had to respect Luke Powell going deep, and so he was wide open. And a lot of room to run. 
Nice block out there thrown by Luke Powell as he gets out, breaks the tackle down the sideline. That's a big game. Stanford now at the 10 yard line. This is what they wanted. Something to give them some confidence to build on. That was a gain of 30. Kerry Carter trying to check the play here as Kyle Matters apparently changing it at the line of scrimmage. And we've got movement up front again. Kirk Chambers, I think the left tackle, out of his stance a little bit too early. Dead ball, false start, offense, five yards. Mistakes and errors. Three penalties already yeah, between mistake. the two teams. Now this is early, and this is the big game, but watch this closely with Stanford because they're not the kind of team that can make up for these mistakes and errors. They don't get uh, real estate in big chunks. And this is the kind of problem that Stanford has had all year long. Make a big play, get within a few yards away from punching it in, and then something bad happens. Looks like Powell is about to take a direct snap here at quarterback. And he he's going to run it. Getting to the 10-yard line. And they gang stop him there, Donnie McCluskey, the freshman. All right, enough. Guy. <laughs> They're going to be tackling him into the parking lot. Well, they get, they get the five yards back, but that is something new. you got to look at this again. They line Powell up with kind of a short punt uh, situation, and he, he's not going to pass. And he, he picks it down and says, I'm going to run this football. That, that deep down in, I don't think he was going to pass anyway. I think it was just a fake, kind of a, a quarterback draw for him. The Stanford coaches told us yesterday they were going to put Powell in the backfield occasionally. They come out with it on the first series here. Now Kerry Carter is back in as the tailback, and Matter is back under center. On second down and ten, here's Carter up the middle, stopped for a gain of two. Carter's not real fast, but he is strong and powerful. A guy that can hammer away, and he scored a lot of touchdowns in his career for Stanford. Thomas Vercheck on the stop. Big Kerry Carter. Senior from Ontario, Stanford's leading rusher, 490 yards in nine games. Big down. If they can get a touchdown, if they can get in there and score first, it would mean so much for this young Stanford team. Third down. Goal to go from the eight yard line. Matt, look at the tail. Touchdown. Touchdown. Boy, it took a long time for the official to finally put those arms up. Taylor was already doing his version of the Lambo leap over there, but he beat Nandi Asamoa and size matters. 6'7", Teo Johnson. Well, Asamoa is 6'2", but how do you, you combat the basketball player? It wasn't a great pass, but it was just a, over Anamdi's head just enough where Teo would make the catch, and he made a fine catch. Michael Scroy on for the extra point. Up and good, so Stanford strikes first here in the big game. You can throw the records out the window in this series. 7-0 Cardinal. Welcome back to Berkeley. 7-0 Stanford striking first thanks to Teo Johnson. Yeah, he's wide to the left side by himself, and that's over 6-2, Asamoa, no chance. Ryan Wells and Luke Powell were flanked to the other side, and that left, Asamoa, man on man on 6-7, Tail Johnson, nice catch. Uh, just got the foot down for the touchdown. Only need one foot down in the end zone in college football, and then Tail was up there in the, uh, in the Berkeley section going, yeah. hi guys, how do you like me? The kickoff here by Johnson, high end over end, but again short McCluskey at the Cal nine yard line. Weaving his way. Actually that was Bethia, out close to the 30 yard line where Cal will take over there. First and ten. You can notice that the crowd here at Memorial Stadium has gotten very quiet. <laughs> Stanford is on the board. They're a little bit shocked. They're back on their heels. But this crowd was up to see Cal finally win the big game, and I think that's kind of taken a little bit of the wind out of their sails. Well, Cal had scored first in every game this season until now in the big game. And that's why we say, you know, the past records are meaningless because stuff happens in these games <laughs> that you just can't predict. Second offensive series for Cal, running the option down the line of the pitch to Joe Igberg. 
out to the 35-yard line. Lee Torrance up from his cornerback spot on the play. Now, Igbert, with 96 yards rushing today, would become a 1,000-yard rusher. That would be a first for a Cal back since 1993, back there when they had Lindsey Chapman. Keep your eye for LaShawn Ward, number eight. He's flanked out here at the bottom of the screen because he's their big play guy. Runs a 4-3-40. Second down and four. Short drop by Bowler. Going to his tight end, Tom Swoboda. Very close to the first down marker. Swoboda, 6'4", 240. He's had a big year for them. A guy who's really come on. Uh, seven touchdowns, and that leads Cal. Uh, so he's really done well for them. And he was a forgotten man in the offense last year. Really not a factor. So he might be the happiest guy in town uh, that Jeff Tedford has taken over this program. Next to Kyle Bowler, yeah. First down Cal at their own 40-yard line. The handoff to Aker, turn in the corner. And inside Stanford territory at the 45-yard line, stopped by Otagwe. Another first down for the Bears. Now you can see that this just opens right up for him. Able to get out to the edge and he turns it on. Almost had the, the move on the outside to go back outside, but he was finally brought down. But they're well inside Stanford Cardinal territory now. And because of the injury to Terrell Williams, Igber, his health is of huge importance because his backups are walk-ons. Here's Bowler on first down. Complete. Wide open to McKean. Jonathan McConan on the catch. Stopped by Torrance. Let's go down to Mike Schumann with one of the heroes from Big Game Past. Mike? All right, Larry. Darren uh, Nelson joins us. Played from 77 to 81 down on the farm. What's your fondest memory of the Big Game? My fondest memory happened right here on this field. Anytime you beat Cal here, it's a great memory. Fourth down, you decide to go for it. Caught a little screen pass, scored in that end zone right over there to ice the game. That was my favorite memory. And you went on to play 11 years in the NFL, now an associate athletic director, so things couldn't have worked out better. That's true. You know, it's fun to be here watching this game. Sun, get ready to come out. It's a great environment. All right, Darren, thanks a lot. I'll see you, Larry. Thanks, Mike. Going deep to the end zone. Hit. Touchdown. LaShawn Ward. He caught that one over Stanley Wilson. Of course, LaShawn Ward is the guy they want to go to. He's their big play man. He was open earlier and almost had that touchdown pass, but he, he, it went off his fingertips in that first play from scrimmage for Cal. But that was a great route, beating Stanley Wilson in the corner of the end zone. And Kyle Bowler put the ball right it was a great on throw. the money. Absolutely. Mark Jensen out for the extra points. Senior from Pleasant Grove, Utah. Up and good. So Stanford scores first, but Cal strikes quickly. Three first downs, and then they go to the end zone with Kyle Moore hooking up with LaShawn Ward. We're tied at seven in the big game. Back in Berkeley, tied up at seven apiece, Kyle Bowler with his 27th touchdown pass of the season, Martin. Yeah, flanked out on the right side, Jonathan McCona and LaShawn Ward, and that forced single coverage. Stanley Wilson just turned around too late. LaShawn Ward makes the fine catch, touchdown. And it was a great throw because Bowler recognized that Wilson wasn't looking. He threw it right behind his head. As soon as he turned, he was by him. 71 yards in five plays. Quick strike capability with Kyle Bowler at the helm. Well, you can tell it's not freezing here in Berkeley. <laughs> Temperatures are in the 60s. Sunshine trying to peek through. Heavy overcast early in the morning. And it's burning off, though. But back deep there for Stanford, you've got Ryan Wells and Grant Mason. Wells, with 20 more yards and kick returns, will hold a new Stanford career kickoff return yard. So that's something for him. Here's Mark Jensen. High kick. He's taken at the two-yard line. Wells out past the 20-yard line to the 23, and that's where Stanford will take over on first down. You know, this has kind of been a Murphy's Law season for 
Stanford and Buddy Tevens. You know, a lot of stuff that could go wrong did go wrong. Early they didn't have Chris Lewis, so Kyle Matter, redshirt freshman, had to play the very first game at Boston College, up by 10 at BC, a game you figure you're going to win. And one of your seniors, Casey Moore, has a crucial fumble. BC comes back to win. And then Chris Lewis, when he finally is able to play, he gets hurt. And it's just been one thing after another for Stanford this year. Never really able to get into a rhythm or get on track. First and ten for Matter. With a lot of time to throw. Going for Teo. And incomplete. Hit Teo. from behind by Namdi Asamoa. Yeah, Teo was, was, was open for a second, but Asamoa came right back and made a nice play. You talk about these two quarterbacks. Well, Kyle Bowler, this is him in high school. He set a state record his senior year, 4,838 yards at Hart High in Newall, California. 59 touchdowns. He was the player of the year. This is Kyle Matter, same high school. He was a sophomore when Bowler was a senior. 81 touchdowns. He threw for 7,500 yards. As we come back live, incomplete over the middle, contender for tight end Alex Smith. Matt Nixon on the coverage. I guess if you, if you have a kid in Newhall, <laughs> name him Kyle. He's got a chance to play he quarterback. At a, at a big-time school, too, yeah. The thing about it, uh, you look at Kyle Bowler. I mean, he gained, what, 10, 15 pounds in his senior year in this past offseason. He was much stronger and more powerful. Kyle Matter, he's just a freshman. He's 18 years old. He's a kid. He's, two, he, he's not that strong. 205 pounds. Doesn't have the rocket that Bowler possesses, but steady to make the throws. And he's going down right there. Drop for a sack. Tom Canada. Oh, Canada. The senior making a play in his final college game. Yeah, Canada out of Hancock Junior College. And the thing I always remember about Hancock Junior College, yeah, John Madden coached there at one point. Tom Canada getting around. Matter really did not make the couldn't step up. He tried to step up. He was right there. So on fourth down, Stanford will have to punt the ball away. Eric Johnson. Whoa. Close to being blocked. Not a good kick. No, no flags are down. Great field position for Cal. As we take time out on the field, Stanford and Cal were tied at seven. Seven and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. Back to Berkeley in just a moment. Here's Jeff Tedford coaching his first big game. This guy watches more film than Roger Ebert. I mean, <laughs> typically he's in his office from 7.30 in the morning till 12.30 at night. Three or four days a week he sleeps in his office. We were in there yesterday. He's got this big blue inflatable mattress. I mean, he's a sleep train yeah. commercial waiting Ready to happen to right there. I mean, Absolutely. there's an endorsement deal just waiting to be done. And a former quarterback at Fresno State, so he really knows the passing game, and that's what he's rubbed off with Kyle Bowler. 34-yard line of Stanford. Bowler has a man wide open. It's Mandarino, came the freshman. Out of the, yeah, he came out of the backfield. Nobody was there to pick him up. I mean, the linebacker was chasing him at that point. Chris Mandarino out of Newport Beach, California. And that's Jared Newberry, uh, one of the linebackers trying to catch up. He had no chance. If he doesn't fall, it's a touchdown. 17-yard gain. That 17-yard shanked punt by Eric Johnson could prove to be very costly for Stanford here. As you take a look at the, the offense versus defense. Here's Bowler on first down, trying to step up. Eluding the pressure. And Kyle Bowler, one of the things that Tom Williams, the co-defensive coordinator at Stanford, said, said, hey, I know the guy has a rocket for an arm. I'm concerned about his scrambling ability because he can run. He just showed some maneuverability there because Lewis Hobson Jr. had it for a sack. Pulled his way out of it. You'll see number 90. That's Lewis Hobson Jr. He has him dead to right. Nice move by Bowler. He's going to get what he can and take that and then go on to the next play. Takes a possible loss and turns it into a three-yard gain. Looks like Bowler's checking the play at the line of scrimmage. He's got Joe Igber in the backfield with him. Give on little Joe the draw. Breaks a tackle. Stutter step. To the five. First down, Cal. Ran right out of Matt Leonard's grasp. 
I mean, Leonard had him dead to right at that, but that was a missed tackle. Strong, powerful Joe Igbert breaks it down and gets the first down. Because 5'8", 190 pounds, the senior. There he is. There's the tackle that should have been made. Nice stutter move. Steps outside, gets another five yards, gets the first down. So it's first and goal. Colin Branch saved the touchdown. First and goal for the Bears at the five-yard line of Stanford. Bigber needing only two more yards to go over 1,000 this season. It's going to be pretty close right there. I think he made it to the three-yard line. Last Cal back to break 1,000 yards, Lindsey Chapman. Lindsey Chapman, that was 1993. Absolutely. One yard away. You think he's going to get it on this drive? I suspect. They're going to pay him back for that nice run. I think he's going to get the ball. They're spreading him out. Man. Double wide receiver to the left. McConan and MacArthur. It's a quarterback draw, and Bowler is swallowed up. He is sworn. I don't know if that was really a draw, a design play that didn't get the handoff, because he didn't really, uh, didn't open up as a draw to me. Matt Leonard on the stop that pushes the Bears back here. I think that was just botched. Back to the eight-yard line now, so it'll be third and goal from the eight. We'll see what Jeff Tedford comes up with here. He's the offensive guru, has revitalized the Cal offensive attack. He threw the lone tailback. And Bowler the throw. Out into the flat, goes to Ibra. They say he's out of bounds at the one-yard line. Well-conceived play. With both the wideouts lined out wide, they send the back out. It just made it really tough. Jared Newberry again, just overmatched, trying to catch up with him. Fourth and one now, fourth and goal at the one. What do you do here? You kick a field goal, you're going to try to punch it in. I'm going to take it in. This is the big game. There's Jared Newberry trying to catch up. Won't be able to make it. He does get him out of bounds to prevent the touchdown. Going to go for it on fourth and goal from the one. Mandarino and Igber in the backfield. Double tight end set. Play action. Oh, Bowler lost the ball. Picked it up. And Stanford holds. They drop him at the two-yard line. You know, he was trying to hold he the ball behind his back, back. Like a bootleg and to hide the ball and conceal the ball. And the ball just came out of his hands. This is a big break for Stanford. This is what they needed to keep them in it because they had to be down. Look at the replay and look at Bowler trying to tuck the ball away. It just flies out of his hands. He's lucky that they didn't pick it up. Of course, it was fourth down, so it didn't make any difference. They get the ball. <laughs> Real things happen when these two teams get together. Baba Tunde, Oshinawa. Put the final stop on Bowler at the two-yard line. That's where Stanford takes over. Casey Moore up the middle to the ten-yard line to give Stanford some operating room in the shadows of their own goalpost. Jamil Powell on the stop. Casey, of course, is Mr. Big Game himself. The longest touchdown run in get big game history. That happened as a freshman. And he was uh, a freshman, 94 yards. Of course, he also had a touchdown to win it in 2000 game right here in overtime. 30, 25, 25 yard catch for Casey Moore. He said he didn't even know growing up in Florida. Big game, what's that? Florida, Florida, Florida State. Florida, Florida State. Yeah. He got a quick education. It was a seven yard pickup. Now the gift to Gary Carter over the left side, close to the first down marker. Again, stopped by the senior, Jameel Powell. The one thing Stanford has over Cal is that big offensive line. I mean, they are huge. They are outweighing Cal's defensive front. So this is something that they may look at really hard. Hey, maybe we can pound these guys and tire them out. Well, across the front line, 307, 305, 295, 317, and 308. And this is tough yardage down here. They've done well. It's third down and one. They could make a first down. Third and one. Carter and Moore in the eye. The give to Carter. He's not going to make it. Driven back by a, a sea of blue shirts. Led by Burt Watts, the senior from New Jersey. Boy, they rose up. 
And he had some help. That was a big stop by Cal because it keeps him in great field position. They should have good field position on the punt return. Look at that. He met him right there in the hole. Boy, stuck his head in there. And Kerry Carter, 6'2", 235. He's a low. Burt Watts, the leading tackler for Cal this season, had 15 against USC. Cal with the Here's the punt. Eric Johnson moving it away. Jameer Powell taking it at the 46 and had it right down. Almost had a seam there, but still great field position with Cal in business now at the 35-yard line. Let's go down to Mike Schumann on this being the 20th anniversary of the play. Here's Mike with more on that. Well, with the 20th anniversary of the play, we thought we'd break it down for you in the course of the day. And as we look back at it, uh, here on the Cal kickoff return team, there's only four men on the front line. You see in there, one, two, three, four. Well, the rule says there's supposed to be five. And, of course, Cal only had ten men on the field. Those are both penalties. You talk to any Stanford, uh, former Stanford player, they want that axe back. <laughs> yeah. You can get them started pretty easily when you talk about that play. Bowler throws incomplete. A flag's down, though. Down the sidelines intended for Jonathan McConan. That might be a flag on Stanley Wilson uh, trying to guard McConan. Uh, Going to be pass interference or holding. Pass interference. Ooh, that's a big one. Now, the one difference is you watch a lot of NFL on games. The, defense, the penalty is 15 yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. It's 15 yards, but in the NFL, you get the ball at the spot of the foul as opposed to a 15-yard penalty. Yeah. I, you know, I didn't think that was that big of a penalty, but but he, he pushed him. He pushed him off. He, you know, in the college game, you got to let that receiver run free. He wasn't at the line of scrimmage. He was 15 yards down the field when he pushed him off. But that's a tough one for a toddler. The young man, yeah, a toddler. So first and ten for the Bears. Bola rolling out to his right, throwing back to the left side for Swoboda. Beautiful catch down at the Stanford five-yard line. Swoboda again, coming up with a big play. Another well-conceived, well-designed play. All the action goes to the right. He looks back with that one long, the tight end, coming back, and he was wide open. Gain of 16 over the top of freshman linebacker John Alston. We've seen Bowler put the ball on a line, throw a laser, here with a little bit of touch for his tight end. And that was the perfect pass. The only way he's going to complete that one with the touch, because Alston was there with some fairly good coverage, because all the motion was going the other way to the right side. First and goal from the five-yard line. Allen and I trying to snap a 7-7 tie here in the first quarter. They give to Igbert, weaving his way, looking for a crack in the defense, and there was nothing there. Will Svitek, the sophomore from Newberry Park, on the stop. This is a really interesting story with Svitek. He goes both ways. He plays defensive line. He'll play some tight end. He'll also play special teams. Now, th there's a guy who should that's, be getting paid for whatever he's doing today. That's a 60-minute man. I tell you, you know who stepped up and Tongway stepped up on that play. They were trying to sweep outside. He was there to meet it and force Igwe back inside. That's what prevented that play from gaining any yardage. Second and goal from the five and a half call at the six yard line. Triple wide receiver to the right for Cal. Bowler tucks the ball behind his back again. Throws end zone intended for McConan and incomplete on the coverage. Lee Torrance. Yeah. That was some pretty good coverage. They had trips to the right. Just one long re receiver on the left side. And Bowler did look uh, on that way to the left side to fake them, but then he really wanted to go to the side of the trips. And you yeah, see he pulled the away. receivers trying to run across uh, to pick each other off, to pick their defenders off. Uh, Torrance had a little help with the shirt. As he That'll went, happen he now and then. It a little bit, yeah. <laughs> 35% on third down for the Cal Bears throughout the season. They run a screen pass. Almost, almost. Could have been picked up because it was batted in the air by one of the Cardinal linemen. That Trey Freeman. That's a pretty unusual call at the five-yard line, running that what some call a jailbreak screen or a, a flame screen intended for LaShawn Ward. You usually run that at a different 
spot on the field. He almost threw Trey, right into Freeman's hands. Trey Freeman, yeah. And and they what they really was trying to do was a little inside screen. They had spread everybody out. They had double wide receivers on both sides of the field. Here's Mark Jensen, a 23-yard attempt. He's 18 of 23 in field goal attempts this season. And he bangs it through. So Cal, after giving up the first touchdown, they come back and score the next 10 points. And really, the key there was getting the great field position off of the short punt, short punt. to take a 10 to 7 lead. And Stafford really has played well. I mean, basically, they prevented two touchdowns. They have given up the one field goal, but they were in position to score two touchdowns. Uh, Cal was, but they had saved it, and they've only gone, given up the field goal in that series. This is the 105th edition of the big game, and so many great moments from the past. We go back to 1974. Steve Bartkowski, an All-American, giving Cal a 20 to 19 lead, hooking up with Steve Rivera with 50 seconds left. But then freshman Guy Benjamin drove Stanford across midfield, and Mike Lankford kicked this 50-yard field goal as time ran out, and the Cardinal won it 22 to 20. Now the 10 points today, the 2002 Bears have set a modern-day school record. We got 407 points this season, so the old mark was 406 points in 11 games back in 1991. Here's Jensen kicking off. Wells doing a tightrope back along the sidelines, out past the 20, and dropped at the 27-yard line. Well, Jeff Tedford came in with the reputation of being an offensive guru. Yeah, he has done that. School record in points scored for the Golden Bears under that man right now. It's a 25-yard return. It's a flag down at this point, and it's going to be against Stanford, so they're going to go back holding. That's going to take them back another 15. Yeah, and field position has been huge in this game thus far. And this, and, and, and Stanford, uh, to its credit, is fighting hard uh, because they've had the, the worst of the field position. They lost it on that bad punt, and they haven't been able to regain it yet. So they've got to put together a big drive to get at least, if not points, get back the field position. And they've hurt themselves already with that holding penalty on the kickoff. Saw the numbers on Kyle Matter there. As they're still trying to position this ball for the spot here. They set it down at the 13 yard line. First and 10. Stanford trailing Cal 10 7 here in Berkeley. Four wide receivers set. And they'll swing it out. That's Luke Powell. Up at the 20 yard line. Namdi Asumwa on the tackle. He's moved around a lot this season from safety over to corner. And when I was talking to Anamdi, you know, last year we called him Asamua. Yeah. And, and yeah. everybody just butchers. Well, look at the spelling on yeah. the back. I mean, yeah. nobody knows how to pronounce it. So I just said, look, easy way for you to tell everybody. Think hockey. Patrick Wa, all right? Awesome Wa. Awesome Wa. Very good. Namdi Awesome Wa. It's easy. His brother actually plays for Stanford, Chijoki Awesome Wa. There's a pickup of eight yards by Luke Powell. Second down and two. As Matter changes to play at the line of scrimmage. Give on a draw to Kerry Carter. Got the first down. And out to the 27-yard line. Marcus Daniels, the senior from Los Angeles. Oldest guy on the team making the stop. He's 27 years old. You know, Stanford is doing some interesting things. They're doing a lot of moving around of Luke Powell trying to get him in position to make a play. Getting him inside so they can send the guy deep and then throw in the short pass and maybe that he can make a big play for him. And it's not a high-risk pass. And that's what I see them doing. We saw Buddy Tevens on the sideline. He's really had to rein in his offense because everybody was expecting, oh, fun and gun, it's Spurrier, it's Florida. There hasn't been much fun or gun because of a lot of the injury problems and mistakes that have been made. There's Tato Johnson getting free down the sideline for another first down. You know, it's so tough to play him man-to-man. Asamoa, -man. again, in single coverage with Teo. They're trying to put height on height. At least the Cal DBs are you know, trying to match up as best they can. A lot of teams have 
have tried to just double team tail and take him out of the equation completely. And Asamoa really probably is better as a safety. You know, I mean, he's he's a, going to be a good corner, but really he's probably his position is safety, but he's forced out there on the corner, and that's a tough one for him. That was a gain of 19. So you talked about the swing in field position. Stanford's got it out by midfield. Again, they'll throw it down the line to Ryan Wells, the senior. McCloskey's got him and drops him after a gain of about four. High percentage pass, throw the ball out. I mean, this is almost like the West Coast offense, just but it's a longer pass in the West Coast offense. Throw the ball out there, let him run with the football. And that's the final play of the first quarter. Cal leading Stanford 10-7. Back with more in just a moment in Berkeley. Hey, the big game, of course, always has some big moments. How about the 75 big game? After losing the 74 big game on a last-second field goal, Bears All-American running back Chuck Muncy took the 75 big game into his own hands and legs. He ran for three touchdowns, and he would throw this 46-yard TD pass to Wesley Walker, Cal Robert Stanford, 48-15. The Bears share the Pac-10 title, or the Pac-8 title with UCLA, but the Bruins went to the Rose Bowl because they had the win over Cal. Chuck Muncy, remember he used to play glad or the, the glass the glass, the big, big glass. Yeah. here's the gift to Kerry Carter on second down and six as we start the second quarter Donnie McCleskey the freshman from La Puente California on the stop you know Stanford is, seems to be working into a rhythm now offensively they're taking a little short pass running with the ball they're hammering here and there with Carter so they seem to now be picking up the rhythm gaining in their confidence I'm telling you, the Bears better put something on them because these guys, if they get confident, they do have talent. And the problem was not making mistakes. Third down and four. That's tail in motion. And he has a touchdown catch from earlier in this game. Matter. Roller to his left. Sets up. And for Wells. That's a really tough throw for him to make coming all the way across the grain and try to hit his man, Jameel Powell, on the coverage there. Well, the, the, the good news, he did throw it so nobody else could get it. It was out of bounds, so uh, it wasn't going to be picked off, but that was a very, very difficult throw, uh, tough decision for him to make. He really only had uh, two receivers out on the route, so he really didn't have that many choices. Johnson, the junior from Antioch, back to punt. Jameel Powell, number one, waiting for it. Four Cal high spiraling kick. Oh, this is a beauty. Well, he's going to bound into the end zone for a touchback. But for a moment there, like uh, he was going to stand up in the air and was going to stick, get a break. But uh, it took a Cal uh, bounce and they get it in the end zone to get the ball on the 20. 46 yard punt. No return, but when you take out the touchback yard, it just really only net 26. But still, for Stanford, I mean, you know, this is this is the time now they got to make a stand. Uh, they got to stop because they haven't stopped Cal's offense in the last two series. Cal with a 10-7 lead here, early second quarter. Larry Beal, Martin White, Mike Schumann on the sidelines. The handoff to little Joe Aker gains about two or three yards as the pile moves. Kyle Bowler. Well, Buddy Tevens knew that was the man he had to stop today. I certainly have a tremendous respect and awareness of Kyle Bull, a very talented quarterback. He's as good a QB as I've seen uh, during the course of the season. Uh, he's a leader. He's a competitor. He makes plays. So you're flushing from the pocket. He's, he's a physical guy. He's not afraid to run. He has the ability to come off his primary or secondary receiver and, and just find a play to ad lib. Sounds a lot like a high NFL draft pick, and that's what Bowler will be. He may be a first-rounder come springtime because the NFL scouts just love his talent, and he's finally been able to put it all together in his senior season after three years of misery. Cal called timeout, so we'll take one as well. Here in Berkeley, the 105th edition of the big game, and Jeff Tedford's Cal Bears with a 10-7 lead over Stanford. Coming right back. There's the, the gang of Tightwad Hill. Cheapskates. Man, <laughs> well, you saw Mike Schumann up there. Yeah, Mike was having fun. He said, you know what? You got to hold on. You need a seatbelt because you're almost sliding down that hill. And 
is the tree. A new tree. Here's the give. Up the middle. It's Joe Igbert, the little man from Honolulu. Start at Iolani High School. And if you notice on that play, Larry, they were setting up a, re a reverse to the to the wide receiver round. They gave it to Igbert and then faked to the wide receiver. So you better watch that one because they're going to give that pretty soon to LaShawn Ward. A gain of 11 yards. Igbert now with 46 yards in this game. And there you see his season numbers for his career. He's up over the 2,900 mark into third place on Cal's all-time list. Russell White and Chuck Muncie are one and two. Igner came into the game needing just over 90 yards to crack 1,000 for the season. Incomplete, intended down that, the sidelines right there for Jeff MacArthur. Yeah, going for MacArthur, but even more than that, they were going against Stanley Wilson. If you've noticed, they've gone deep several times against Stanley Wilson, so it looks like they are kind of picking on him. That's a guy they think they can beat deep. Take a look at the first quarter stats here. And a pretty, you know, what, what's there to pick from? I mean, look at Stanford, 48 yards rushing. That's not bad to Cal's 29, but of course Cal has 95 to 54. I mean, just like the score, this is pretty close, 10 to 7. Second down and 10 for Kyle Bowler. Four wide receivers set. Goes Dropped. Sean Ward right through his hands trying to make a play because he knew he was going to get outside. He thought he could outrun the, the uh, coming over toward him was, uh, was Torrance, Lee Torrance. Ward has the great speed. The one problem that he's had in the past is the drops. And he has NFL aspirations, so he's going to have to work on that. Tighten up. You on see those uh, those wristbands? They have the plays written out right there on their hands, uh, on their, their wrists. Here's Bowler. Down the middle, he's got it. It was wide open, right at the first down marker. Hit by Otagway, the sophomore from Canada. But that was, that's what makes him so dangerous. Joe Igber, little scat back, tough for linebackers. First to find him, find him and then to tackle him. And he ran right by Jared Newberry. This is the second time. Newberry's really catching it tough. He's the guy that's got to pick up those backs coming out, maybe help out on the tight end. They got the first down. Just made it. Ten yards. Igber, born in Nigeria, went to school in Hawaii. Reminds me, if you remember Stanford guy a few years ago, Glenn Milburn? Yeah. Same kind of guy. And Glenn went on fat. He had a 10 15 year career. Great company to him. Glenn somehow runs the sack and scrambles as a flag flies at the tail end of the play. But man, Kyle Bowler just did a Houdini. He disappeared. Trey Freeman right there on top of him. I mean, this guy's 6'3, 300 and some pounds. Yeah. It's holding against Cal. When yeah. you see a jailbreak like that, uh, one. <laughs> We're going to see holding, and we're going to see some escapability. Wow. Right over him. Big Lewis Hobson again. Now you see him, now you don't. I think Jonathan Giesel was the man caught for grabbing. Holding on the offense, 10 yards to spot of the foul, first down. Well, Cal is sputtering a bit. They got it going, then they sputtered a bit. This is going to take them back. Maybe give some kind of a little push for the Stanford defenders. Look for number two on the left side, the cornerback here, Stanley Wilson. When he goes back deep, I'm, I'm noticing that Bowler seems to look that way to go down and challenge him. Five penalties for 48 yards against the Cal Bears here. And of course, uh, LaShawn Ward already beat the Stanley Wilson for one touchdown. First down and 16 as Bowler appears to be audibleizing at the line. He's got Mandarino and Igber behind him. Gives to Igber on the draw. They can't get it. They can't find it. To the 50, gets a downfield block. Little Joe Igber. Great cutting ability by Joe Igber. Great vision and great cutting ability. Gain of 28 yards. Look at a lot of pressure. Gain of 28 yards. 
look at this move at the line, shakes off the linebacker right there, leaves him with his jock, and then just goes in and around Torrance. That is a great move. Lee Torrance had him brown to his back. Look at him again. Watch him just shake the linebacker here and leave his jock on the ground. <laughs> Two of them. Woo, and then he'll turn Torrance all the way around. He's behind you, sir. Make the tackle. And Lee Torrance does. It's a Victoria's Secrets play because all that's left is your lingerie. <laughs> Bowler with a pump and go. Good coverage down the field, so he'll take off. And he scrambles for another first down. That's what Buddy Tevens was concerned about coming into this game. Yeah, Everybody this talks about the, the arm of Kyle Bowler, but he could beat you with his feet. And he did that time because he looked towards Stanley Wilson, trying to go to uh, Jonathan McConan. Wilson had good coverage. He just pulled it back in and scrambled out to the other side. Scramble for 12 and another Cal first down. Stanford defense seems like they're spending an awful lot of time on the field and we've got under duress an injury on the far side well, it's not an injury I no, guess they're, they're trying they're to, trying to signal and end the play I, I might have had to repair the chain or it looked like everybody was huddled around it, it looked like there was somebody hurt over there yeah, they got the play in now maybe just a bent chain as you look at Cal starting to pull away in the yardage category get 192 yards first and 10 <laughs> for Kyle Bowler well, he's got all day to throw yeah. Sean Ward. with that much time Stanley Wilson didn't have a chance I mean LaShawn Ward put at least three different moves fakes on Stanley Wilson and with that much time it was a great job by Cal's offensive line protection for Kyle Bowler 22 yard touchdown and his second of the day to the speedy LaShawn Ward it's going to be a long day for Stanley Wilson the extra point Mark Jensen and he missed it he shanked it to the right so Cal takes a 16 to 7 lead thanks to that man, LaShawn Ward, his second touchdown of the game. It's a nine point Cal Bear lead. Back in Berkeley. They may pass this guy around the whole <laughs> afternoon though. Oh, he's looking for his shoes. Good and luck, his, uh, <laughs> his shoes in one sock. Here's Kyle Bowler. This would just time uh, Cal record for being responsible for 32 touchdowns. LaShawn Ward just too many, too much time on Stanley Wilson. Look at it again. I mean, Ward makes about three different fakes on Stanley Wilson, and he's wide open in the end zone because he eventually goes inside. But this gives uh, Kyle Bowler 32 touchdowns in the season, 28 pass and three rushing and one receiving. So that ties Pat Barnes' 1996 team record. Kickoff taken by Ryan Wells at the five yard line behind the wedge out to the 28 yard line. Let's go down to Mike Schumann on the sidelines with another flashback as we continue to go back to the 1982 big game. Mike. You made a touchdown catch in that big game in 1982 of the play, and that has to be your fondest memory. Oh, yes, definitely. You know, to go back 20 years, you know, 20 years from this day, and you know, to, to see Cal and Stanford, it just brings back great memories, great memories. And you just told me that you played with Jeff Tedford in Calgary when he was a quarterback. Exactly. Jeff and I played together in Calgary. He was my quarterback. I was a wide receiver. We had a, you know, great time up there, and uh, it's great to see the success that he's brought back to California. I look forward to many years of him being here. All right, Wes. Thanks a lot, buddy. Enjoy the game. Right on. on first down, they swing it out to Grant Mason, and he is chopped down by Paul Ugenti, the senior linebacker from San Jose. Now you see Cal making an adjustment defensively because they've said, hey, what they're doing, trying to do, spread us out and throw those little short passes. So they're, the linebackers, Ugenti, they're cheating out a little bit so they can get there quicker and make the tackle on those short passes. And moments ago, we witnessed history. The missed extra point by Jensen snapped his school record streak. He made 72 in a row, dating back to the 2000 season. It doesn't happen often. Cal showing blitz here with McCluskey. Now he's going to back out of it. Matter. 
incomplete off the fingertips of Teo Johnson. But, you know, this is, and maybe you can expand on this, for a freshman quarterback, he sees the blitz, he's going to check out of the play, then they don't come, and... He's stuck. It's tough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, you know, because he's already planning on, to make his adjustment, and then he has to go back to his original plan. And by that time, the timing is gone and it's off. Bob Gregory, though, is going to throw him a lot of different fronts, the defensive coordinator for the Cal Bears, because he knows he's a freshman, a guy that uh, really hasn't seen a lot in experience. Third and 11. Now here comes the blitz. It's a draw. Kenneth Turwin into the game. He'll get nothing and like it. The ball may have popped loose at the tail end of the play. Let's see if they're they down. down. They've downed the ball, but the ball did pop loose. But Stanford really not trying to do anything too much. They basically were kind of giving up on that one, hoping to catch him with the draw play. But you can see that they're taking the safe route out with this freshman quarterback. That was Wendell Hunter. Wendell Hunter is a, a, big, a big play guy for Cal. He's one of those guys who makes highlight real kinds of plays. Fourth and 16, Johnson back out again to punt. His fourth punt of the day. A better win this time. To Neil Powell, calls for a fair catch at his own 36-yard line. 44-yard punts, no return on the play. Let's go back to the 1987 big game. Brian Johnson with a big moment. Johnson was a 19-year-old redshirt freshman for Stanford. Completed the longest pass in big game history. Walter Batson, 82 yards, leading the Cardinal to victory. Of course, most people remember Johnson as the baseball player, the Giants catcher back in 1997. One of the one of the great home runs in Giants history against the Dodgers late <laughs> in the season kept them out of the playoffs. First down give to Igber. Out past the 40 yard line. Thought he might have dribbled the ball at the end of the play there. Looked like it came loose momentarily. And here's what they want. The Axe. For seven years it's been in Stanford possession. Stanford's going to have to play some offense to, get the, to keep the Axe, I'll tell you. You notice, if you look back at 1982, the score there, they have it. Circle that, baby. Yeah. 25. Hey, how are you at finger painting? There you go. <laughs> it's gone. Second down and five. Oh, they take the reverse and get the pitch to Igor with running room on the left sideline. Into Stanford territory, dropped by Oshmago Otagwe. His friends call him OJ. You've got so much to look for when you go against Cal and Tedford's offense. I mean, they had been running that dive play, then fake to the uh, receiver coming across this time. They pitch out to a back going the other way. I mean, there's so many keys that you better read properly or you're not going to get it. First and ten. Bears trying to build on a 16-7 lead. Play action again for Bowler. Going deep down the sideline. Gasson Ward. Pass interference call. Stanley Wilson. They're going to have to give Stanley Wilson some help. I mean, LaShawn Ward would just run by him. If the ball was deeper, that's a touchdown because he had Stanley Wilson beat. He just needs some help out there. They're going to have to help him out. You know, this is the part of the on-the-job training for the three sophomores in the Stanford secondary. He's trying to make up ground. He just ran all over. And LaShawn Ward He's got to get the penalty. The flag's thrown. But better the penalty than the touchdown. Well, we talked about this yesterday with Tedford as a defensive back. You have to decide what, what are you going to do? Are you going to play the man and not look at the ball at all? And if you play the man, then you try to reach in as as Wilson did there. If you take a peek into the backfield and look at Bowler, well, then Ward's right it's by you. So pick your poison. Yeah. Yeah. First down and 10 for Cal. Bowler stepping up to elude the rush. Throws a one hopper. To the sidelines intended for McConan, but a flag is down. 
Well, it's a good thing that was a one hopper because Stanley Wilson, I want to give him credit, he was all over uh, uh, Jonathan McConan at that point on that particular route. So if that ball had been up, he had a possible action at an interception. Holding against Cal. Well, Stanford's defenders have been out here most of this quarter, as you pointed out. And they're getting tired. They have to be getting tired. But more than that, it's the mental strain, the stress, the man, how are we going to stop these guys? They're coming at us from, from all different angles. So they, they've got to find a way to get off the field. Stanford rotates 11 defensive linemen. Let's take a look at the, the last five drives for the Cal Bear offense. They're starting to crank it up. And so they've got that 16 7 lead. They're, they'll rotate 11 guys up front to keep bodies fresh, but they're not consistently getting pressure on Kyle Bowler. Here, rolls out to the right. Deep down the field, he's got Bowler. And that's intercepted. Beautiful. That is Lee Torrance. Trying to get to the sideline. Beautiful play by Torrance as he brings it all the way back to the 26 yard line. See now, this time Stanford it was running a two deep zone. That was the, the, the defense that helped them out. Now we're able to pick it up. 27 yard return off the interception and Stanford takes over on offense, trailing 16-7. Come back live, Kerry Carter over the right side, stopped by Calvin Hosey. A big play though for Stanford there, Martin, because you don't want to get too far buried. You don't want to get too far in a hole and LaShawn Ward was looking for his third touchdown of the day. Well, they saw him. They had one man, of course, that was LaShawn Ward out there on the right side, flanked out. And basically, Lou Torrance was helping out. And he was able to make the move and come over and make the kick. That was a good play for you. Second down and 10 for Stanford. Trailing high nine here in the second quarter. A gift to Carter on the draw. Gets to the outside to the 32-yard line. Stopped by Jameel Powell. Kerry Carter from Canada, 6'2", 235. Very powerful, very strong, but you can tell not the kind of moves as the Igber because he had a one guy to beat there and he couldn't beat him. Stanford would have liked to have used more of Kenneth Tolan in this game, but he's got a bad ankle. We saw him on one carry earlier. They may put Casey Moore in at tailback as opposed to the fullback position. But we'll see. So far, it's been mostly Kerry Carter on third and five. Matt, here comes the blitz. Incomplete. Intended for Luke Powell. Didn't have the time. Can't blame uh, Matter on that one, but really didn't have the experience and the exposure to step back and try to get away from the, the, the rush. He just tried to get rid of the football. Donnie McCleskey was bearing down on him, forcing the incompletion. So on fourth and five, Johnson with his fifth punt of the day. Some pressure. Still roots it out of there. Boy, nice gamble by Jameel Powell. He ran up and picked that one off. That was a, a ball that a lot of guys would have let bounce. Take a break. Cal gets the ball back on offense. Good field position right at the 50-yard line. And they've got a 16-7 lead. Back in Berkeley. Martin, you've been around a long time. What is that? That's not a hat. <laughs> <laughs> that is a man from outer space. I, I, you know, Stanford... Uh, did a great thing with the interception, but boy, their offense does a Lawrence well. A one and a two and a three and a punt, and they're right back on defense again. Oh, that hurts. Yeah, even the band is hurt, huh? Hey, that's Calvin. Yeah, look at him. Got an injured band. She's on IR. Play hurt, lady. <laughs> First and ten for Cal. They're at their own 49-yard line. 234 yards of offense into the second quarter here as they hand it off to Igber, stopped by Jared Newberry. We continue our flashbacks to the 1982 big game and the play with more on the controversy. Mike Schumann. Well, I love a Lawrence Welk reference in any college football game. As we go back to the play, we look at it again, and Dwight Gardner, the freshman, was his knee down. Well, you ask any Stanford alumni, he was down, and the referee was behind him, could not see him. Just another reason that makes this play so special. 
Yeah, the Stanford people are pretty much convinced that Dwight Garner was down. Going to the sidelines, McConan almost able to shake free. Lee Torrance there just did pull him down. McConan's a junior. He's a transfer from City College City of San College. Francisco. Yeah, George Rush with a great program there. They were the 2001 national champions. In fact, they're undefeated still. So uh, they, yeah, they that, lose a game a like program. De La Salle once every decade. Yeah. You can be guaranteed they're going to lose a game. Nine yard pickup, so it's third and one now. Mandarino and Igbo in the eye. They spread you out. They hit those outside passes. They hit those deep passes. Then they pop you with the little guy. Bam. It's a tough, tough combination. That's what makes this Cal offense under Jeff Tedford. Nice jacket. So <laughs> dynamic. And Joe Egbert with that run goes over a thousand yards for the season. There he is. 1,042. That's right up there with Lindsey Chapman. He is now what third all behind Chuck Muncie and Russell White. And those are some Chuck Muncie, of course, a great name. And Russell White in the 80s. Great name. Extra points. Mark Jensen's got it back on track. And Cal starting to pull away here. 23 to 7. The Bearbackers enjoying the show put on by a little Joe. Coming back to Berkeley in just a moment. Oh, film line. This is the big game, and that man, Joe Edgar, is having a big game. 12 carries, 138 yards, and this is a 42-yard touchdown. As soon as he broke through right there, it was over. Yeah, Jake Kovac had the only opportunity, the linebacker, but he overran the hole, and that was it. He was popped clean because they had receivers flanked on both sides of the field. So there's your corners and there's your safeties. They end up chasing him. The little and no man, way they're going to catch. The little man from Hawaii, Aloha <laughs> means goodbye. Mark Jensen taking it away. A short kick taken by Mason at his own 15-yard line. Scores around like a top and gets out to the 28. Stanford really has to be careful. I mean, the game is starting to get out of hand at this point. If nothing else, their offense has got to put together some kind of a drive so their defense won't be right back on the field again. That has been the problem. Their defense has been on the field most of the second quarter. 12-yard return, Jeremy Drake, one of the outstanding special teamers for Cal, made the stop. You see those guys starting to look tired over there. And they're shaking their heads. That's not good body English. When they're looking like in disgust and despair. Unfortunately for Stanford, it, it's a look that they have worn much of this season. Matter will go out of the shotgun here. With double wide receivers left and right. Throws to tail over the middle. And the big man is powering his way, huh? First down. How many men does it take to take Teo Johnson down? It takes four at least. Gain of 13. Awesome wide didn't pull him down. I tell you, that guy's a safety. They got him at corner, but he is strong and he is a hitter. I talked to Teo this week and he said you know, he had such high expectations this season fun and gun offense there are people talking yeah. about him catching 70 80 90 balls and he, he's under 40 as he came into this game he said he's having a hard time sleeping because he's just so frustrated yeah I can understand it well he can go on to basketball because that's what he will do about as soon as this game is over he's not going to immediately go but within the next day or two he will head to the Stanford basketball team and he's been working out on Sundays with the basketball how about Mike Montgomery's team with a huge upset this week of Xavier Big upset. Xavier ranked 11th in the country. Nobody expected anything really. Out. This is a big rebuilding game. Yeah, Namdi Asamoah, of course, his brother Shioki plays for Stanford. So he says it's hard for him to have a hate for Stanford because his brother's there. It's it's amazing the things you'll hear. Like they just can't stand Stanford. Like it. You know they're like they're terrorists or something. You know it's 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 been it's been pretty crazy. You know the the strange thing about that I I visit him all the time, so I kind of got to know their players 
you know, outside of football. So I can't be like, yeah, I, I hate these guys. And, you know, Stanford, maybe as a university and as a team, as a whole, yeah, I'm, you know, I, I'm against them. And, you know, I don't want to lose to them. But, you know, the people, I, you know, I, I pretty much know the whole team. So I'm not, you know, you know, that much against the players. I just, I just hate losing to them. <laughs> not sure he's going to lose to him today. Cal with a 23 to 7 lead. I saw Namdi before the game, a couple hours before. He was shaking hands with the Stanford players, some high fives. You know, he's friends with those guys. Fraternizing with the enemy. Yes, yeah, sort of. Yeah, they're Luke Powell. They're trying to find ways to get Luke Powell the ball so he can make a play. Now they just ran him with the football. Wendell Hunter on the stop. Luke has been. Well, I asked him, you know, what are you, 70%, 75% most of the season? And he was coming back from a groin injury that, that's really lasted you know, months. And then an ankle injury on top of it. He's the one guy that would resemble in skill some of the Florida receivers that the yeah. fun and gun is really made for. Two-yard gain on that first down play. Matt running for his life. Trying to fling it out there. Incomplete. Intended for Greg Camarillo, McCleskey. A freshman, and for him to coverage. make for him to make that throw, he'd have been Brett Favre. <laughs> he's running on the dead run, tried to just throw it with his arm. No, he, no way he's going to get that. But the pressure was just too much. Kyle Matter, at one point in this season against USC, completed 15 passes in a row. The first 15. Yeah, and that that was you, when you see something like that, you see the skills and the potential that he has and the potential that this offense has. They just haven't been able to put it together and keep it together. Not consistently. Third down and eight. This place has come alive. Fans making noise. Matter Here steps up and he goes down. Matt Nixon was there. Lorenzo Alexander as well. The sophomore from Berkeley on the sack. Loss of five. Another punting situation. For Stanford and Alexander uh, Lorenzo is only a sophomore, as you pointed out, but he may be their best lineman already as a sophomore. Johnson getting a lot of work here. He's six punt of the day. High spiral kick. This is nicely done. Jamil Powell takes it in his own seven yard block. He's got a hole in the lane, and it's all going to come back. There's two flags everywhere. <laughs> A little overzealous in the blocking. You can't do that when the man has his back turned to you. So it's going to be some clip, and they're going to get a 15 yard or something else. Jameel Powell is going to break a record for punt return yardage in this game. The way he's going, <laughs> the way that Stanford has just not been able to put together anything consistently in offense. So the punter's getting a lot of work, and so is the punt returner. Yeah, block in the back. I mean, they had everything on that on that play. It was a 55-yard punt. By the way, the paid attendance today? 70? 71,000. There are two fouls on the play. Illegal block in the back on the return team. That's declined. Illegal block in the back on the return team. The penalties from the spot of the foul, half the distance, first down. How do you know which illegal block in the pack? The penalty you're supposed to take. The one that's further closer to their goal line. Very so good. That's Very good. That's it. All right. <laughs> Seventy-one thousand. Is that included? No, that doesn't count. They they got another ten thousand on Tidewater Hill. You, you, you know, <laughs> they got a lot of folks up there. First sellout here in Berkeley since the 1994 big game. Here's Joe Starkey, KGO Radio, for 28 years, and the man. Associated with the play as much as anybody for that heart stopping call. We'll hear more of that at the half. That's a warning for the Stanford guys. Bowler stumbles in his end zone and he's got the lead on the field. LaShawn Ward. LaShawn Ward had Stanley Wilson beat by five yards deep on this side. That was a 60 yard throw in the air. If he had it been 70, it would have been a completion. <laughs> well, it was, I mean, if it had been 50, it would have been a completion. How about. Jeff Tedford in terms of guts. All right, we're backed up. He's open. deep in the shadows of our own end zone here. Let's throw the bomb, huh? It loosens everybody up. And that's why I think Igbert's going to be so successful continuing to run. 
And he's deep in the end zone at this point. Usually when a back is that deep, he's going to run the ball, and he is. Up the middle for Igbo. You can tell when a back cheats and lines up deeper in the backfield so he can see the lanes open up. They'll get closer to the line of scrimmage when they have to make a block for passing because they don't want the guy taking a run uh, when they're coming in, uh, powling in the linebackers that they'll have to pick up. Gain of four, so it's third down and six now from the uh, Cal eight-yard line. Now here's a tip that LaShawn Ward beat Stanley Wilson in the 2001 big meet in track. So he said, hey, man, I own you. I know <laughs> I'm faster than you, dude. <laughs> yeah, that conversation may be taking place on every play. Flags fly as the ball flies over the middle, intended for the tight end Swoboda at the 25. Well, there's definitely a flag at the line of scrimmage. Somebody was offside. Uh, I don't think the call was downfield, although the receiver was knocked down. That's procedure against Cal. Illegal formation on the offense, only six men on the line. That penalty is declined, fourth down. That's the call that Stanford wanted in 1982. Not enough men on the line. Yeah. Not enough men on the line. Again, we'll have more on the play coming up at the half. Fourth down, so Tyler Fredrickson will have to punt the ball away from his own end zone. Luke Powell, it is at the 50-yard line. Well, Stanford should have great field position, and maybe this is the break they need to get them back into the game. A nice return, and they'll be right on the doorstep. Low line drive kick. Powell takes it at the 43. Inside the 30-yard line of Cal, down to the 28-yard line. Short punt of only about 35 yards. Peach Bowl bid slipped away for Stanford and John Elway's first big game as a start. He fumbled twice deep in his own territory. Then Cal's Jay Torturio would break the 21-21 tie with that touchdown. Cal would have a 28-21 victory. Elway would get revenge the next year, throwing for 245 yards and three scores. The Cardinal proves 42-21. Torturio, by the way, his real name is Jay played for the San Antonio Slingers of the USFL. I like that one, San Antonio Slingers. 14-yard return on the punt. And Powell has put Stanford in pretty good shape here. Oh, right intercepted. Donnie McCluskey, the freshman, out in the flat, and I don't know if Matter ever saw him. Matter just did not make a good decision on that throw. I mean, they threw it right into the teeth of the defense. And Donnie McCluskey makes the big catch, and right away, the Cardinal defense is back on the field. This has to be disheartening and discouraging. Just, he's looking right at him. I, I don't know, maybe he thought he could get it over his head, but the man was also covered by a cornerback there. Just not a good decision by the freshman, Kyle Madden. There's McCluskey, freshman from La Puente. First down, Igbo on the draw, going nowhere. That's Trey Freeman and Matt Leonard inside. Under two minutes to go in the second quarter here, and again, the Stanford defense is back out onto the field. You're just not going to win a football game. Obviously, you got to find a way. First of all, they've got to find a way to get off the field. Secondly, the offense has got to find a way to keep the ball for a while, if not to score, but at least to keep to get field position, which they have right now, but. Now can the defense hold him down? See if Cal goes real conservative here on second and 12, just trying to get into the locker room with a big lead. Uh -uh. No, Bowler's thrown. He's got McCone, and that's a first down out to the 37-yard line. Chijoki Asamoa, Nambi's brother, senior on the tackle of Jonathan McCone. They're trying to get some combinations in the uh, Stanford secondary, trying to stop this passing attack. Jokey, Lisi was there to make the tackle. At the one minute mark here, in the 105th edition of the big game, first and 10, Cal at their own 35 yard line. 
over, looking for more. That's complete at the 45-yard line to Vincent Strang, the junior from Huntington Beach, transfer from Orange Coast College. The guy had a 55-yard touchdown catch against uh, your Washington Huskies, Martin. Yes, and we don't even want to talk about that. <laughs> the probably, I think, the greatest victory for Cal this season was up in Seattle. They ended that 26, 27-year winning streak uh, by Washington at home. Uh, that was a big win for them, and I think that said a lot for this program. Everybody knew that they had arrived on that victory. Yeah, Strang is a walk-on, and he may be the fastest guy on this team. Yeah, only 155 pounds, and yeah. some of the, the players joke that he might break if somebody if they can catch him. If they can catch him, right? Yeah. Good point. But yeah, you know, you're right. You talked about the victories for Cal this year that that have been eye-opening. Certainly, that game at Washington, third game of the season, going into East Lansing and knocking off a ranked Michigan a ranked State team. team at the time made everybody go, "Whoa, what's going on?" In Berkeley. That was before we found out that Michigan State was just ranked. <laughs> they were also ranked and they were ranked. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> but the chance with a victory here today to post their first winning season since 1993, they would go seven and five. And we should also mention that there is no bowl game possibility for Cal. The NCAA ruled earlier this week that even though they would be bowl eligible in terms of qualifying wins because of some previous violations uh, they gave them nine they gave scholarships, nine scholarships back. back so they were kind of saying you're right but yet we're not going to take everything away uh, so, the nc2a certainly didn't want to admit they were just totally wrong but they did give them the scholarships back that's important first and ten for bowler off the time oh, it away again. Oh, it stumbles down amon gordon in on the rush and we've seen bowler i think at least two or three times in this game duck underneath he shows a lot of strength and, and balance being able to make that move not only being nimble enough to make the move but strong enough because these guys we're talking about 280 290 uh hanging on to him 15 seconds to go as bowler steps up and closes to the sidelines and way out of bounds incomplete and well so he had pressure up the middle that time when he stepped up he had nowhere to go and basically he was just getting rid of that football third and 19 with 11 seconds left I would assume we're going to see a deep pass again now Jeff Tedford is not really a big fan of the kneel down before halftime he's aggressive attacking and the, the Cal players have really responded to this new style and you know seven years of frustration never winning the action seven straight years hey they're going to go for it all right over in the pass Throwing the deep out intended for Strang and incomplete. Well, now you got to pump the ball. Now bad things can happen on the play. Get blocked, it can be returned. So that's why a lot of coaches do take the kneel down philosophy. I don't want to take a chance in anything bad happen. The guy could fumble, fumble the punt. So things can happen on the punt. Uh, so that's why the coaches take that conservative route. And Fredrickson yeah. had uh, three blocked the season. Yeah, yeah, if bad things happen on kickoffs, as we know, uh, at least uh, Stanford does. Five laterals, possibly. Yeah. Last week, uh, Arizona blocked a punt for a touch. Oh, some pressure there. And a short kick. And time's going to run out without Powell having a chance to return this ball. So, Jeff Tedford gambled a little bit, trying to go for more points. But uh, no problem for Cal as they punt the ball away safely and head off the field. With a 23 to 7 halftime lead. Stanford scored first, you'll recall, on a Taylor right. Johnson touchdown catch in the corner of the end zone. Since then, it has been all Cal. 23 unanswered points for the Bears. Let's go down to the sidelines, Mike Schumann. All right, coach. A little sloppy on offense with two touchdowns through the air, one on the ground. You got to be pleased. Yeah, we're playing okay. We got to play a little bit better, be sharper in the second half. We've had a couple guys open. We need to hit them. And our defense is playing very well. We just got to play another another half of it. It is the big game. Go get ready for the second All right, half. Thank you. All right, and of course, we've got the big game and the play coming up. Everything you wanted to know about it, stay tuned.
We went into the game thinking if we controlled Elway, we would we would have a chance to win the game. We we scored some on some some great catches. If you look at uh, review the game, there's some miraculous end zone diving catches. This is for Uh, we end up being ahead late in the game, and now Elway's got the ball, starts his drive. He's got it fourth and 17 with, you know, a minute and minute or so left in the game. And you're looking at John Elway, the greatest quarterback in the history of the college game. It could be his last play. Fourth down, 17. Rose for Harry. It's complete. Hold everything. Unbelievable. At that point, you're feeling pretty frustrated. There's Stanford knocking on the door with the, the opportunity to go ahead with hardly any time on the clock. So I remember sitting around thinking, gosh, darn, how did we let this one get away? He has a 32-yarder in this game. The big game hangs in the balance. You got to think about the center, the holder, and the kicker. All the pressure in the world. We watched the, the winning field goal, goal go through, and uh, it, it was it was just it was high fiving ecstasy. It was it was just so crazy in the southern end of the stadium because uh, it meant one we we win the big game in incredibly dramatic fashion, uh, and two we're going to Birmingham, the Hall of Fame ball. When you get down to four seconds in a football game, it's in the players' hands. I mean, there's not much or if anything that a coach can, can do with four seconds. Uh, I'm cool, I'm calm, I'm collected. Somebody said we had too many, men's on the field, too many men on the field. I said, get somebody off. So that's why we had 10 men on the field. Uh, that's brilliant coaching. If you're holding your breath. You know, I wasn't on the field for the play because I wasn't on the kickoff team, but you know, you're holding your breath and you're thinking, let's just get those seconds off the clock, and you know, the play seemed to last forever. There was uh, only four seconds left, and the, t and the players took control. Prior to the play, I know Richard Rodgers had got a group of guys together and just kind of said, hey, don't... you're holding your breath you know I wasn't on the field for the play because I wasn't on the kickoff team but you know you're holding your breath and you're thinking let's just get those seconds off the clock and you know the play seemed to last forever there was uh, only four seconds left and the, t and the players took control prior to the play I know Richard Rodgers had got a group of guys together and just kind of said hey don't let the don't let the play die the kickoff came right to me and at that point I was thinking I'm gonna score a touchdown so I get the ball take a few steps and that's about as far as I got before I realized hey there's three Four Stanford guys running right at me, and I, I don't have a lot. I'm not going to get very far. So, at that point, I happened to look over and see Richard Rogers on the sideline, and just hey, take it. Harmon will probably try to squib it, and he does. Ball comes loose, and the Bears have to get out of bounds. He doesn't get very far. Turns around, and, and Dwight Garner just happens to be standing there asking for the ball. Rogers along the sideline, another one. And I see uh, Dwight cut back. I say, oh. We shouldn't do that but then again it's the players on the field that are going to get it done i saw richard get the ball back again on a pretty close call with from dwight you know being pretty close to having his knee down but uh he uh he get, ekes it out right before he goes down they're still in deep trouble at midfield they tried to do a couple of the ball is still loose i was convinced myself for just a brief second that on the third lateral that the ball carrier had gone down richard makes a great read Nice pitch to Moret. He gets it, takes off. And they get it to Rogers. They give it back now to the 30. And all of a sudden, the ball's in the air. And when you look back at it, you see this guy diving through the air, taking out a Stanford guy, pitching the ball, you know, not really looking at where he's pitching it. And all of a sudden, I look up, and the ball's floating down in my arms. They're down to the 20. All the band is out on the field. And then things kind of start getting a little weird. He's I start my celebration and don't see Gary Terrell kind of coming out with his trombone and happen to kind of crown my celebration with him. He got it in the end zone. Will it count? The Bears have scored. I turn around and see all kinds of folks running on the field. Some of my bandmates, uh, the folks with the axe themselves, some of the players, the cow band. You know, it was just 
chaos headed toward the field and just turn around one more time and just as I was about to do that that's when uh, that's when I guys just knocked over I had no idea how he had gotten there with the football I think a lot of people today they see the play and they assume that it was an instantaneous decision and there and it's just an immediate call by the ref that it's a touchdown it wasn't instantaneous it was a minute and a half or two before they did it and while we're at living through this and waiting come on give us an answer suddenly the hands go up and that's when I I just lost it completely the Bears have won the Bears have won oh my god the most amazing sensational dramatic heart-rending exciting thrilling finish in the history of college football California has won the big game over Stanford oh excuse me for my voice but I have never never seen anything like it what I remember is when the whole incident was over and we were watching the officials uh, uh, make their decision and the touchdown sign went up I told Bill Cooper and uh, uh, Tom Keating, our uh, coaches, I said, let's get out of here before they change their mind. <laughs> After a game, we, we would all participate in grabas and uh, grab ass if you'd like. And it's like keep away and the, there's no rules, uh, but the ball does not hit the ground. If you take that same kind of attitude in terms of, hey, just go have fun, loosen up and, and keep the ball going, that's exactly how it translated into that play. It was a bunch of guys playing grabas. It was not an accident. Uh, uh, when you prepare yourself for, for that moment, uh, uh, that's what you call good luck. Getting set for third quarter action in Berkeley. The Cal Bears with a 23-7 lead. Buddy Tevens looking for some more offense here in the third quarter. And just a few moments ago, Mike Schumann caught up with Buddy. All right, Coach, uh, we've got to play a full another half. What do you got to do to get the offense on track? We're just going to start playing. We're very conservative. We're going to put the ball down the field. We've got to make some plays. We need to protect the passer and make good decisions at the QB spot, catch, catch some balls, and, and, and move it down. It's a two-score game right now. Uh, we'll come out with our ball our ball right off the bat. We need to do something. Why, might you make a switch at quarterback with Chris Lewis? Uh, Chris is not ready to, to go. He won't play today. All right, thanks, man. Yeah, Chris Lewis. Got that lingering shoulder, shoulder sprain yeah. that's really been perplexing for the Stanford staff because sometimes he'll come out, practice a Wednesday, practice Thursday, looks good, feels good Friday, can't move a shoulder. Yeah. And they don't know, you know, if they're going to have to have surgery. There's a young kid, Kyle Matter. I mean, he's 18 years old. He comes in and is thrust into the situation where he's got to lead the team, and it really hasn't worked out. And you can see I, he's been overmatched a ton. After scoring on their opening drive, Stanford hunted six straight times and then the interception. Let's see what they can do here to start the third quarter. That's Ryan Wells. Oh, big hit. down. Big hit. Big hit on the yeah. play. The Cal with James Bathia there making the hit. Of course, he's their big hit guy. Bathia in the secondary and he can make the move. All right, here's Kyle Matter. Can he get it turned around? Does he have the, the, the physical tools, really? I mean, he doesn't have the great arm strength. Only 66 yards passing in the first half. And Stanford, you know, if you look at the statistics, their passing offense dead last in the Pac-10 this season at 179 yards a game. Usually you think Stanford, you think the aerial attack. And Matter will go up top on first down. He's got Luke Powell close to a first down. And he's got the first down, and he went downfield. And this is what something Buddy Tevins was saying. Tevins was saying, hey, we got to go downfield. we got to look downfield and make the right decision. And that's what they're going to have to do. Otherwise, everybody defensively is just crowding up, crowding up, and trying to cut off the short pass attack and the run with the football. Stanford needs a drive here. They need points just to get some momentum back on their side. You saw the long faces in the crowd at halftime. Cal showing blitz here from the corners. And got a movement by one of the Stanford offensive linemen. They're going to have to go back five yards. Well, they're talking about it. Maybe one of the Calmen actually tough, but I don't think they infringe in that neutral zone. Yep. That the procedure against Stanford. Stanford. Dead ball, false start, offense, five yards. 
I mean, things down. start to snowball. You're trying so hard. We've got to pass protect. We've got to pass protect. The linemen are anxious then to get into their pass uh, protect uh, a stance. And then, you know, Cal, they're up 23 to 7. They know you got to pass. So they're coming. They're laying their ears back and they're coming at it real hard. And that just makes it even more difficult for them to get back to pass. First down 15 for Kyle Matter out of the shotgun. Throwing the screen to Luke Powell. Oh, he's drilled. Whoa. Wendell Hunter. Big hit, and you said he's the big hit guy. And he came in. Boy, Powell thought he was going to have a corridor to run down, and he went back inside and met Mr. Hunter. Big hit. That was a very difficult gain of one. <laughs> a painful gain of one. Second down and 14. Three wide receivers set for Stanford. Now we got Bethia. Press coverage against Teo Johnson. Looking for Teo. And that is open. But not enough for the first down. Driven out of bounds by Namdi Asamoa out at the 35 yard line. Still about four yards shy of the first down. So now they got a big third down. And to keep this going, they're going to have to make at least three, maybe four yards to make this first down and keep this drive going to get something going here in the second half. You want to make some first downs. You want to at least start to establish something. And that's what they've got to do. So here's a big one. We'll see if they're going to be able to do it. Well, they give them a good spot. They call it third and two now. That's Teo in motion. Play action for Matter. He's got Casey Moose open. open. Scramble now. And he is dropped. Now Matter had Casey Moore open if he, he looked at him, but he didn't throw the ball to him. Tom Zvercek wrapping up the quarterback, setting up fourth down. It looked like he had a moment when Casey Moore was open. He had to release had the ball. That, and that's what Tevens was talking about. We got to make good decisions. That was this, the decision to make. Here's the punt by Johnson. Jameel Powell back at his own 16 yard line. Him. Johnson giving chase. Touchdown Bears. Jameel Powell. Jameel Powell is a big play kind of guy. He's got five interceptions. That was a beautiful move right up the gut. And once he got past the first line, nobody was going to catch him. He was gone. 84 yard return for Jameel Powell. What? That is a dagger through the heart of the card. Cal hasn't even had an offensive play yet and a half yet they've scored. It's going to be 30 to 7 and their offense hasn't taken the field yet. Here's Jensen for the extra point. It's good. I'm going to go one further. How about an axe? <laughs> we'll take a timeout. The Cal Bears, Jameel Powell, one of the seniors on this team, heading for the end zone and a 30 to 7 lead. The axe may not belong to Stanford much longer. Cal with 30 unanswered points and scoring off the punt return here early in the third quarter. Short kick is taken by one of the up men. I guess he called for a, a fair, fair catch. catch. You don't see that often. Uh, you can do that on, on, on a kick on a kickoff. You can make a fair catch and that's what <laughs> David what Bergeron. Did. David Bergeron I guess didn't want to get hit. Huh? Nah he's a big lineman. Well you know he doesn't want to fumble but at exactly. the 15 yard line you got to catch it and just give it back to either Grant Mason or Ryan Wells. Exactly. He could have just handed it off and then make the block but uh, he made a fair catch. Yeah. The Fisher was right there on it. He was really waving say hey come on over here and I'll give you the ball. <laughs> the official thought it was a fair catch. Zone. 30 to 7. Kyle Matter out of the shotgun. That ball is tipped and that is intercepted. Paul Ugenti, Ugenti, the linebacker, in the right spot at the right time. Coming back, 
on the old tip drill. And Matter not making another good decision. I mean, he threw right into the teeth of the defense. Senior out of San Jose. Let's go! You can see it from Matter's view. I mean, he looks downfield, looks downfield, and there he throws it over. There's two guys there. Right, intended for tail, but it was, you know, the, just not going to get an opportunity at that point. Ball was tipped and picked. Here's Bowling, swinging it out to Joe Igbo. Makes one man miss. He takes it down on the 25 yard line. Well, Igbo has that kind of ability that the uh, NFL scouts always look for. Will he make the one guy, the first guy miss? And he always makes at least the first guy miss. As Buddy Tevens realizing this game could be out of hand. It may already be out of hand, but it could really get out of control here in the third quarter. We're still early third quarter. Well, their offense has been, you know, since the second quarter on, has done nothing. Kyle Bowler lofting it up to the corner, intended for LaShawn Ward. Pretty good coverage over there by T.J. Rushing, the freshman. Well, they got the freshman in there to see what he can do to help cover it because uh, they've had some problems covering LaShawn Ward and, 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 of course, the other wide receivers. It, it's been tough for the defenders. Jonathan McConey, they just hadn't been able to cover him. You see the wide receiver group for Stanford, they're all together, and we have Ryan Eklund warming up. And they're all together saying, can somebody get us the football? Well, Ryan Eklund is probably going to get a shot here pretty soon. Third and ten. For Kyle Bowler and the Cal Bears with a 30 to 7 lead. That is man. I believe it's McConan. Well, TJ Rushing, the freshman, got worked on right there. That was man coverage. Inside the 10 yard line. At a city college in San Francisco. McConan just worked on it. Just makes it tough for the freshman. Uh, he's supposed to be their, about their number three cover guy. He's in there on their nickel. Gain of 18, first and goal for the Cal Bears at the seven-yard line. Their offense has been like a machine today. Little pitch. I tell you, it's, uh, it's like tackling a mosquito. He, he made the one guy miss, and fortunately for Stanford, they were able to close in on him because. Really, this is close quarters when you're down in the red zone. Jared Newberry stopping the five. Imagine being a linebacker in open space <laughs> and seeing Joe Oakley. It's just, you know, you'd rather have some hulking 250-pound guy try to run you over. Rumbly, that's, you know you're going to make the hit. You know yeah. you're going to get yeah. some contact, yeah, exactly. at least. Or with Igbert, you just leap at shadows. Well, Stanley Wilson has been benched, obviously, and the freshman is in there at the corner, T.J. Russell. See if they work on him. Throwback. Oh, you're going to and it was a lateral. They were trying to throw back a, a, a tight end screen, basically. But that went backward. It had to be a lateral, and it is. So they're going to lose yardage on that. Was intended for Mark Wilson, the tight left end. tackle, and Lewis Hobson. But he was eligible. Right? Yeah. A lot of pressure. Yeah, that's a free ball right there. Lewis Hobson thought he might have a turnover himself there. That might be a little now, bit too exotic. Now that is an exotic, <laughs> strange play that uh, Tedford is known for, for writing them up. Those wee wee hours. Here's Bowler going to the end zone. open. Oh, it's incomplete. Flags down. I think it's Lee Torrance didn't even turn around. His back was completely to the quarterback. The ball hit him on the shoulder. Now, I don't think if they're going to call face guarding or what, but that looks like it's that the uh, the offensive line was holding for Cal. It was intended for LaShawn Ward, who had a step here. He didn't even see it. The it ball hits him on the helmet. Yeah. Well. Looked like he could play for the Earthquakes right there. <laughs> Landon Donovan. <laughs> a header, and it's goal. <laughs> penalties yeah. against Cal. The good news, the penalties against Cal. The bad news, they're still going to kick this field goal. Injury report, Otagwe just limped off, so the secondary taking a beating for Stanford in this game. 
This will be a 33-yard field goal attempt by Jensen from the left hash mark. Kick is up, and he missed it. You know that offensive play that they tried uh, with the offensive line to throw him a lateral? They ran that for a touchdown against Air Force. So it's one of their exotic plays that, that has worked for Texas. Well, the field goal doesn't work out right here, but Cal still up 30 to 7. In Berkeley. Oh, they got the mini helmets there. The battle of the helmets. Cal with a 37 lead as we flash back to 1947. The 0 and 8 Indians then had built an 1814 lead over the 8 and 1 Bears. Future All American Jackie Jensen found Paul Keckley with a jump pass at the Bear 35. 80 yards, then the longest pass play in big game history. Jackie Jensen, hey, one of the great, great athletes out of Cal. Played Major League Baseball. Stanford needs some athletes right now to step up and try to get them back into this game if possible. 30 to 7. Matters still in the game at quarterback for Stanford. Throwing short, and I believe that is complete. Alex Smith, the tight end, sophomore from Colorado, Brian Trombley on the coverage. Alex Smith, his father, uh, Edwin, was an NFL player. Uh, he had eight catches for 120 yards and a touchdown. Alex Smith, really athletic tight end, but part of the problem for Stanford is the injuries this year. And they had Brett Pierce, who's going to be a stud, one of the best in the country. He got hurt early in the season, and it's just been a litany of, of things going wrong. Is Kerry Carter over the right side. On second down and one, close to the first down mark, it would depend on the spot. Lorenzo Alexander. It looks like they got it uh, on this one. Yeah, it's close. They're not going to miss it. Keep the clock running, I believe. Well, maybe <laughs> <laughs> one of the ideas for the refs right now. It'll be very short and third. Uh, is Matt Leonard? Defensive tackle for Stanford. You might see him playing on Sundays next year. Third and one. Third and one. It was not a first down. They give to Carter over the right side. He's got the first down and ridden out of bounds. Jameel Powell on the stop. Gain of six. Stanford's best defense so far has been the missed kick. They missed an extra point and they missed the field goal. You know, the hard thing here for Stanford, if, if you feel the strength of your offense is running the ball, that's fine yeah. early in the game. But when you're down 30 to 7, it's hard to run off tackle and make a comeback. Three wide set with Carter in the backfield. Matter. Eludes one man. Nice move on the scramble. Well, wow, nice job by the freshman, Kyle Matter, out to midfield. Donnie McCleskey. Well, he made a nice decision there, but, you know, you got to get the ball downfield. I mean, he, he did what he had to do. He avoided one guy, but you would hope that he could have stopped and found the receiver open downfield, get it into his hands, and hopefully they can make a big play. McCleskey's a true freshman, moved in at the rover back, kind of a safety position, when Namdi Asamoah moved out the corner. So McCluskey's played a lot in the last few games. High formation, first down for the Cardinal at their own 49-yard line. This is the give again up the middle to Carter. But he's a bruiser. He'll carry, guys. And he takes it into Cal territory at the 47-yard line. Well, it's 30-7. to seven. It's not impossible. But they're going to have to get something going on this drive. Uh, to bring it back to a, a possible two touchdown game. Second and six. And that would be with two point conversion. <laughs> Casey Moore, now the lone setback behind Matter. Straight back to pass. Looking for Taylor with a deep ball. They have it. Oh, pass interference is going to be called on Asamoah. Asamoah. Well, see here, you know, you have a guy who's 6'7", 245. Let him go make a play or at the it, very worst, you know, get pass it, interference. It's the Terrell Owens philosophy. Hey, 
I can beat my guy. Throw the ball up, I'll make a play. They're battling down the sideline. Asamoa and Teo Johnson. And Teo's going to win that battle. He's 6'7". He almost made the catch. Teo in the mold of Tony Gonzalez of the Chiefs. They're both basketball players That's right. as well. Yeah. Very good basketball players. Teo, of course, playing with, uh, with, with Stanford and uh, Mike Montgomery. He played with a real good team at the Collins. These, these guys were down to the Sweet 16. And he was a big contributor. So the penalty moves the ball to the Cal 32 yard line. Matter looks to be checking off. Luke Powell is man on man. Watch out for Luke. And they're going to Ryan Wells. Oh, that ball is almost picked off. Asamoah made a great jump on the ball. Asamoah was right there, made a jump on Ryan Wells. He was sitting right on that movement. Let's go down to Mike Schumann. All right, joining me now, uh, Jack Hart, a member of the 1959 Cal team that went to the Rose Bowl, teammate of Joe Cavs, now the director of the East-West Shrine Game, which is this year at Pac Bell Park. That's correct. January 11th, we're going to kick it off at 11 o'clock. So uh, let's have some fans come join us. And we have some local players in the game this Absolutely. year. Absolutely. We've got a great Stanford Cal tradition, obviously. This year we have three guys off the Stanford team and two guys off the Cal team, and we're looking forward to having them with us. All right, Jack, thanks for joining us. Back to the action. Good. All right, thanks, Mike. On second down and ten, Matter rolling, spinning away. So he's done a good job running the ball. He's paying the price. Yeah, he's paying the price, but, you know, he's got to make completions. Uh, at this particular, you know, at this point, you're down 30 to 7. You didn't have much chance then, but... It's difficult for a young quarterback, once he's under siege, to continue to look downfield for open receivers. And that's just very difficult. That's something you learn with experience. You set up third down and eight as you looked at the third down conversion numbers there. Neither team really lighting it up on third down. Matt Nixon made that last stop. Senior linebacker for Cal playing his final game here in Berkeley. Showing blitz on third and eight. Here they Picked come. Picked up. Matter. Flushed out to the right side. For him, man. Give him some help. He's going to run, and he gains about two or three yards on the play. Well, Matter that time, he saw the pressure. He got outside. He motioned for Teo to go deep. Uh, Teo tried to come, come in, come back to help him out, but at that point, the, he was covered by uh, Asamoah. Gain of three, so it's fourth down and five yards to go. You might as well you might go. Might as well for go, it. right? You're down you 30 well to 7. You're inside their 30. You're down 30 to 7. You go for the four. Luke Powell and Ryan Wells both check out. You see what they're going to run here. It's Teo and Grant Mason split left, and Stanford needs a timeout. I'm not sure they have the right personnel on the field. Yeah. So I'm facing fourth down. I want Luke Powell. I want out Luke there. Powell on the field. I want Ryan Wells. We'll take a timeout along with Stanford. 30 to 7. The Cal Bears on their way to retaining that axe. Fourth down and five, and Stanford is going to go for it from the Cal 27-yard line. Four wide receivers set with Casey Moore in the backfield. Cal showing blitz. Matter. Short drop. Pump. His arm is hit. Deflected and incomplete. I think he was going for Grant Mason, but the ball never had a chance. No, no chance. And he, he made the short drop. He maybe should have dropped back a little bit more to give himself some cushion. But he was hoping for the quick. It, it just wasn't there. Uh, you know, this is a tough one for a young guy. He's 18 years old. Look at him. He'll make the short drop, right? Steps up. Now he needs to step back to avoid that he steps into it instead and he gets hammered Tully Banta Kane putting the pressure on and prevented matter from following through with the football so Cal takes over at their own 27 yard line first and 10 for Kyle Bowler and company they're up big 30 to 7 Joe Aper up the middle probably to see a lot of running plays here as the only thing standing between Cal getting that axe back 
is uh, the clock. Yeah, and Egbert already with a big first half, 140 yards in the first half. Uh, we could see him turn up a lot of yardage on this day. Look at that. Igber, 148 yards rushing to Stanford. Total rushing yards for their team, 72 yards. And you know what? Matter got about 15 of those in the last possession. Here's Bola with another gift to Little Joe. Close to the first down line, yeah. and you see the strength you got the in first. the lower body. Yeah. Lee Torrance. Just fighting for the yardage, trying to, to move the chains, and that's what he did. They're going to keep possession of the football. Nolan Blunzer is in at center for Cal. As Teo Johnson looks on there, hoping to get more chances on offense, but the Stanford defense has been on the field so much this afternoon. Well, the first and for Cal. Yeah, and the freshman's out here on single coverage, way wide by himself. On the shift to Igor. Gain of about five. A Togway on the stop. Kyle Bowler has a chance to become Cal's all time leading passer. Needs 335 yards to catch Pat Barnes. Here's Kyle's thoughts. Wins are ultimately what I care about. I mean, I could throw for one touchdown or, you know, throw for five yards as long as we win. Um, I think records are something that's going to be awesome to look back and say, you know, I was, you know, there's a lot of great quarterbacks, Craig Morton, all these guys that, you know, and I'm at the top of the list for all those guys. And I had an opportunity to, to, to break the all-time passing yardage and, you know, Troy Taylor. So um, I, just, I just feel blessed to be a part of it. Another handoff here up the middle. I'm not sure Bowler's going to get enough attempts he's, in this game. He's not going to get a chance. I mean, obviously, Tedford has kind of uh, called the dogs off right now, just trying to run the clock down. Because they were really having their way uh, with the Stanford corners. And in fact, they had it so much that Stanley Wilson got benched. And they brought in the freshman at one point. Unofficially, we got Bowler with 178 passing yards. I'm not sure Jeff Tedford is going to look to air it out here with a 30 to 7 lead. It's going to be a steady guy. He'll go now. Joe Igber most of the way. There's McConan close to the first down marker. And he got the good mark. He's got the first down. And at they the, went right at the freshman. Calvin Armstrong, the freshman from Decatur, Georgia. And a gain of five. That's exactly what they needed for the first time. McConan, we talked about uh, him coming from City College of San Francisco. And a, a really disturbing story as I met with him for a few minutes, Martin. He told me that uh, he was all set to sign with my alma mater. Oh, in the Hawaii. University of Hawaii <laughs> was waiting by the fax machine when out of the blue he got a call from Jeff Tedford. And at the last moment he changed his mind and decided to come to Cal. Oh, boy. Here's uh, Igber <laughs> dancing at the 50 yard line. I told Jonathan, I said, Jonathan, that, you know, I'm happy for you. You've had a great year. But, uh, you better catch every ball because I'm going to have to rip you otherwise. Yeah, yeah. Of course, you know, Hawaii is really putting out some great athletes there. The number one pick for Denver Broncos, Ashley Lele Lele. Asher, and Ashley Lilly, and, and that quarterback they have there that they've got to me now that's going to be a great quarterback. Yeah. In fact, they're talking about maybe Heisman in a year or two for him. Yeah, June Jones is certainly very high on uh, his quarterback, Timmy Chang. This is another great offense to be in at Cal now. They're determined to run the football. Joe Igber. And Stanford is uh, relishing that. They're recognizing it and starting to cheat up inside the lineman. Uh, so Tedford may decide to unwrap one more pass attack and just go up top. Under a minute to go in the third quarter with Cal up big 30 to 7. This would be the culmination of a great turnaround season for that man in this program because. And he was down for a long time. He's done a marvelous job, and we'll talk about some of that later on in this, in this broadcast. Third and 12 for Bola. Under pressure, and he's dropped, and a flag and comes a flag down late. Yeah. Babatunde Oshinawa on the style. I love the name. He's a that, freshman. That is a melodious, melodious name. Babatunde Oshinawa. Yeah. It's holding against Cal. Yeah, they'll they'll decline decline now. Offense, penalty is declined. 
Fourth down. So Cal will have to punt. Luke Powell He's trying to make a big play back at his own 23-yard line, hoping for some sort of a return. He's got four returns, 105 yards. Of course, that 84-yarder for the touchdown. So. Yeah, you're thinking of Jameel Powell. Jameel Powell, I'm sorry. You got Luke Powell. That, that ain't going to work. <laughs> and Stafford unable to return this thing as Luke had to retreat at the last minute. Down at the 15-yard line, so no return possible there. We'll take a break. Stanford takes over on offense. 30 to 7, the Cal Bears in front. We're back. 15 minutes to go in the 105th big game in Berkeley. Cal with a 30 to 7 lead. Back down to the sidelines, of Mike Schumann. Well, if we haven't seen enough of the play, we have what Stanford fans think is the final infraction on that play. Marriott Ford, watch his lateral. He's at the 27-yard line, and Kevin Moen catches the ball to 25. That's a forward lateral, or there's some physics involved. And, you know, being from Florida State, I'll have to go ask a Stanford player about that physics thing. Line. And, you know, I think it's an optical illusion because he threw it over his shoulder. I don't know all the Stanford people right now are, you know, trying to kick the TV set in as well, I say that, but it, I'm the, not sure how that happened. Yeah, well, the, the reason the referee couldn't even make the call, he fell down, tripped over a band member. He wasn't even in position. There's no way. He didn't even see the lateral, so it wasn't going to be a call regardless. Well, Stanford needs more than a play. They need a whole bunch of plays here, and Kerry Carter over the right side for five yards. I, I don't know what you could really do. I mean, if you don't feel you can really throw the ball, basically you're just running the clock out, and that's that's kind of Buddy Teven's dilemma at this point. Well, he's going to have to go down field. I mean, obviously, look at the stats. I mean, man, I mean, if the first quarter it was pretty even, but now it's overwhelming. Yeah, look at that, 324 yards. <laughs> 171 total for Stanford. Justin Faust has checked into the game. The tailback for Stanford. The throws to Alex Smith, the tight end. And he's got it. That's a first down catch out to the 32 yard line. Burt Watts on the coverage. Yeah, Dan, um, Marcus Daniels tried for the interception. He was there on the coverage and just missed it, the linebacker. Take a look at the. USC score. Wow. Trojans up big. 42 to 7 Pete for the Carroll. Bruins of UCLA. Yeah, the Trojans might be playing the best football of anybody in the Pac 10 right about now. Here's Matter. Under pressure. He's going down at the 25 yard line. Sacked on the play. Josh Beckham first to make contact in the backfield. You know that uh, SC UCLA game? You know, a, a big rivalry game. Yeah. The winner gets a jar of smog to go as part of the <laughs> trophy presentation. <laughs> and this one here, you get a jar of rain, the Civil War. Yeah. And of course, at Washington, you get an apple. Apple oh, cup. Right. Yeah. Washington State, actually, you know, excellent team, but number three in the BCS oh, rankings. Maybe something could happen. They might move up. Because Ohio State, Ohio State won, took care of business. If Miami wins out, then it'll be Miami in the national championship game along with Ohio State. Direct snap to Luke Powell. Saw this once in the first half. And he's running it up the middle, shy of the 30-yard line. If Luke Powell can pass, they would surprise everybody. Look, Tedford's alma mater, great quarterback for Fresno State, losing to San Jose State. Hey, if San Jose State, State wins that one, they could go to the Silicon Valley Bowl. Right. Yeah. I'll tell you what, Fitz Hill He's done, done a great job. Fantastic. Just, they had one of the toughest schedules in the country. Oh, and then they play just about everybody on the road. On the road. Yeah. I mean, they were at Ohio State this year, beat Matt. Illinois in Champaign. I mean, it, it's, that's tough. Third and 12 for Kyle Matter, back in at quarterback. Throwing to the sidelines, Teo Johnson threw his hands incomplete at the 40-yard line. And you see the, why Teo Johnson is frustrated. You saw double coverage on Teo, and that's about what it's been for him all this year. 
especially when they know that uh, they're not going deep. They're able to put double coverage on Dale Johnson all the time. Well, they're going to have to spend the entire offseason trying to put some fun into what was supposed to be the fun and gun offense. Because they haven't had much of either this season. Well, they, got, they got to find a quarterback. They got to, and that's what they're going to have to find. I don't know if, if Kyle Matter, you know, is, is the right guy. Punt rolls dead, no return possible. So Cal will get it at their own 26-yard line, 44-yard punt. Cal takes over with a 30-7 lead here in the fourth quarter of the big game. 30-7 lead here in the fourth quarter in Berkeley. 71,000 plus on hand, and they've got to be relishing this moment after seven years of misery and for all of these people waiting to get the axe back and waiting for the Cal program to turn around Jeff Tedford is almost like a guy who descended from heaven yeah. I mean they are in love with Jeff Tedford but it's funny how other schools will look at a great turnaround situation and try to take advantage of it and so one of the things that the Cal staff has been dealing with is questions about hey are you guys moving on you've been so successful here what about either another school Making an offer as Joe Edgar is taken off. It's a foot race to the end zone, and they finally run him down inside the 20 yard line. Lee Torrance. Togway. And the Togway's a touchdown. Yeah. Touchdown saving run. And Edgar over getting close to that 200 yard mark. 56 yard run for Little Joe. Uh, he's over 200 then. Miss tackle, miss tackle, miss tackle. Into the secondary. Foot race, and they finally run him down. Now, Igbert, you say miss tackle, miss tackle. He makes guys miss. I mean, he shakes them off. And when you try to hit him up shoulder high, you'd think a little guy like that, you would knock him down. They'd be able to pull him down. They can't. He's just too strong and powerful. 211 yards on the day, unofficially, for Joe Igbert. First and 10. There's little Joe again. Stopped by Newberry. Just to finish the thought on Tedford, he wanted to make it clear that he likes it here. Uh, loves living in Danville. You know, wants to see the facilities upgraded, and, and Cal has a plan to do that. They're talking about $100 million worth of improvements on this stadium to the locker rooms as well as the weight room. And so he wants to be here and uh, wants to get this thing going big time of course cal fans are all remember though they, they that steve mariucci was here for just a year and then went to the 49ers so that of course keeps a lot of cal fans on edge they want to make certain they can keep their guy second and ten bowlers throwing got him open going for one juggling but out of the end zone yeah. incomplete torrents on the coverage the pass was perfect, it was right there, but he just juggled it. If he makes a, a clean catch, that's going to be a touchdown in six points. Check Great pass that. by Bowler. Perfect pitch, lofted it over Torrance's head. Oh, you were right. If he fielded it cleanly, it's, it was a it's touchdown. A touchdown. Right there, touchdown. Whoa! Whoops, not a touchdown. The bowler is so impressive. I mean, he could throw the ball on a line, and he can also put some air on the ball. Well, well, that might be a lateral. I'm not sure how they're going to call pass. this. I don't know if they haven't called it dead. They hadn't called the ball dead, so it was still a live ball. They, had, they, didn't, whistle, they didn't whistle the ball dead, so it's a live ball. So that was a very smart move by uh, Stanford to at least to hustle over there because it could have been a live ball. Huh? Well, they're going to set up a field goal attempt here. Mark Jensen has missed the point after and a field goal attempt today. Yeah, they're calling that a fumble lateral. So that would be the second that they've had. You know, yeah, they had the, the, the other one at the start of the third quarter. That was to the tackle. Uh, that play that they ran. This will be a 39-yard field goal attempt for Mark Jensen. Boy, bad day for Mark Jensen. Yeah, he's the only Cal guy that's not going to look back at this game and really enjoy it. I mean, he knuckled that one. So a couple of missed field goals and missed extra point. 
And the score remains 30 to 7, but it's about the only thing that's gone wrong for the Bears today. They're enjoying themselves in Berkeley. Strike up the band. The Cal band having a good time with Stanford. Unable to mount any kind of comeback here in the second half, and Cal's leading 30-7. to seven. Yeah, Joe Egbert, 211 yards rushing. That's a new big game rushing record. The old mark was 209 yards by Lou Valley of Stanford in the 1956 big game. So Egbert's 211 yards are also a career high. Sixth best in Cal history. Yeah, and he's going to get more. Previous best of rushing effort was 182 yards in 1999 against Washington. Uh, you have to say that. <laughs> There's Luke Powell on a little end around there. And uh, Luke Banta came yeah. in the backfield in a uh, hurry. Luke Powell, by the way, was an option quarterback in high school. So we've seen him take the ball from behind uh, the center from the short punt. So maybe they'll run something with him. But they're kind of running out of options besides get the ball downfield. Well, you know, that's where the loss of Kenneth Tolan really hurts because he's you know, your typical tailback. He's got the, the, the burst and explosion can make yeah. people miss. And with, with him being slowed by an ankle injury, really was only in for one play. they got to try to get somebody who can make people miss in the backfield, and that is Luke Powell. Here's Matter on a quarterback draw. Well, it opens up nicely for him. Out to the 39-yard line. That's a Stanford first down. Burt Watts wrapped him. I saw Bird at the... Guardsman Luncheon, which was a, a great, as usual, so, always yeah. a great event. At, at the Bob Sarlat, the, the, the MC. Bob, Bob Sarlat, I'll tell you what, he kills, he destroys everybody. <laughs> There's Oski, oh, young Cal fan. Is Oski talking? No, I don't think so. Could be Oski if he talks. Matt is going to end up their top rusher. You might be right. First and ten from the Stanford 39. Throwing the deep ball now, looking for Teo. Pumping with Asamoa, incomplete, and no flag for it. Yeah, Asamoa had him covered deep. There was another a defender bracketing him underneath, double covered all the way. Uh, that was a hard one. I don't even, you know, that was a tough one to even throw that ball. Just hoping that he was going to make the play. You know, just to finish up on the on the luncheon there with Sarlat, he destroys everybody. I mean, whether you're a Cal guy or a Stanford guy, you're going to get you're going to get ripped. You don't want Sarlat doing your eulogy, all right? Because <laughs> because if you weren't dead, you will be afterwards. Here's Matter. Here comes the pressure. Oh, the and recovered by Stanford the boy. Stanford got it back. Tully Banta Kane. Banta Kane nailed him from behind. Does that go down as a sack? Because that goes as a sack, and then yeah. he's, he's moving, inching up in the uh, that single be, season sack record. So that'll, be his, that'll be his 13th. He's getting close to Andre Carter's record. Second in the Pac 10 in sacks behind Terrell Suggs. Banta Kane, third all time in sacks for Cal. He's got 26 and a half now. Andre Carter leads the way with 31. Third and 16. As Tully grew up in Mountain View, that's a red and white territory. But he scars for Cal. Matter throwing the deep ball. And almost completed it to Cal. Intended for Luke Powell, yeah, yeah. but two defenders back there. Yeah. But Thea was there along with Powell. Jameel Powell, that is. And so on fourth and 16, Stanford's going to have to punt again. Ninth punt of the day. This is like old school. Three yards in a cloud of dust. Well, they're trying o to go. Only it's only Stanford doing the three yards in a cloud of dust. And this is Shank. Howell takes it. Spin move at the 34. Down at the 44 yard line. 34 yard punt and a 10 yard return. Seven minutes and 47 seconds to go. That axe will be in Cal bare hands in a matter of minutes. 30 to 7, the Cal Bears. After seven years of frustration and misery, they're going to end this losing streak in Jeff Tedford's first year as head coach. A lot of long faces on the Stanford side. Tedford really has done a job 
turning this program around. When you look at it, one in ten last year, and now he's going to have a seven and five. First winning record since 1973. That's an incredible job. Yeah. Wow. Not too many people thought it could be done this effectively. Speaking of effective, it's little Joe Igber adding to his career day. Go back to the first play of the season under Jeff Tedford. Bowling. It's Terrell Williams on a halfback pass to David Gray for a touchdown, 71 yards against Baylor. And they and, go on and hammered Baylor, oh, yeah. 70 to 22. And, you know, we asked Tedford, you know, were you trying to make a statement? And he said, no, I was trying to get a touchdown. Six points, yeah. <laughs> Never mind a statement. He said they had looked at films, and they decided a month and a half before the first game that they were going to run that play. They thought they could pick up something in the Baylor secondary, and they did. Chris Mandarino on the carry there for a first down. But uh, it shows you the style. This man yeah. wants to attack. He's aggressive. And... Uh, and he was a quarterback coming out of Fresno State. Jim Sweeney was the coach there out of that system where, you know, Fresno State, they would throw the ball, get the ball downfield, work with Pat Hill at Fresno State, turn that program around. When Sweeney had left, they had gone down, and then he went up with Bellotti up in Oregon. So this is a guy who's well-schooled in, in offensive football. First and ten. Tedford has, has done wonders for uh, Kyle Bowler as far as his NFL potential. Joe's a little slow to get up there, but uh, worked as we, uh, as well, we see he Fresno has, State. Yeah, his alma mater's not doing well. It's good for San Jose State, 13-3. That, that is a surprise. Yeah. I mean, that San Jose State's Spartan team is really doing well. Right. But uh, as far as Tedford working with Bowler, you know, they changed his motion a little bit and really just gave him more confidence that's what it was, the key. It, it was the confidence. They did some mechanical thing in changing his throwing motion that will help him not telegraph his passes and get the ball to the receiver quick. Here's McConan again. And they toss him out of bounds at the 38-yard line. McConan playing with a bad shoulder almost all season long. Flag down on the play as well. He came in out of junior college and became Cal's leading receiver this year. 47 receptions for 613 yards and seven TDs. Face mask face call. See if it's uh, five or 15 yards. Tacked on at the end of the play. Yeah, coming out of that program at a city college, I mean, he was well-versed and, and prepared. And that just shows you what George Russ, the coach there, has done. Like I said, they were national face champions yeah. when he Five yards. End of the run. Repeat second down. So... Bowler keeps moving up the ladder. I mean, basically, he's done it all in one year. I mean, his production. Look at him now. He's in 14th place in all-time passing. As far as the, the Pac-10, I mean, he's passed guys like Jim Plunkett, Jack Thompson, they're throwing some more in at, uh, Washington State. Yeah, Jason Gesser of Washington State playing uh, your Huskies Still. in the Apple Cup. Yeah, don't, don't show me that. <laughs> he's given up. <laughs> Here's Mandarino, the freshman up the middle, running hard. Stopped by Troy Freeman, Trey Freeman, that is. Hey, you know, you got to throw the guy a bone sometime. He's blocking all day for Igbo and doing a great job. So, they, hey, let him have a couple of carries. Young freshman doing well, got a good career ahead of him. Be interesting to see what happens to Igbo. You know, he's not really one of those guys who lives and eats and breathes football. And... I'm not sure if he's that excited about pursuing an NFL career. I, I think he, he's certainly got the, the skill. The quickness. Yeah, the skill, I, yeah, maybe not as an NFL tailback, but he could be a return guy. Uh, you know, he, could, he could help some people. I, I like your analogy of Glenn uh, uh, Milburn. He reminds me a lot of Milburn. That size, that small. Milburn was about that size also. Big bird dropped by Lewis Hobson. Look at Joe, 219 yards on the day. Man. You know, we, we talk about this 7-5 and five record of Cal. Three of their losses by a total of 14 points. A two-point loss to Air Force. Right. Two-point loss to USC. So, I mean, you know, I mean, their, their record very easily could have been a lot better. Another three wins could have been 10. The pitch to April. 
stops and starts and stops and starts. I'll tell you, this guy's so much fun to watch. He's a treat to watch. Svitek on the stop. He's got to be getting tired right about now. Coach, let, let one of the other kids play. They're going to roll up these yardage. He's the guy. And let him run. He's a senior. This is his farewell. He said, you can rest when you retire, when you walk away from here with a degree. <laughs> He had one of his best games a couple of weeks ago against Arizona State, 144 yards rushing, but he's obliterated that today into the 220s. I remember when he was a high school player back in Hawaii. I mean, don't, he couldn't even come close to stop. He'd get roughly 300 yards a game. Here's Bowler going to the end zone again. Intended for his tight end, Brandon Hall, and double coverage there, incomplete. They had him bracketed pretty well during that one. Lee, Lee Torrance doing a good job. He's so a deep guy. Fourth and three. Also. Fourth and three. We'll see for another field goal attempt. And they're going to do it until they get it right. Mark Jensen says, I'm going to practice it. I'm going to have a big game <laughs> moment here if it's the last thing I do. It's been a tough day for Jensen. Two missed field goals and a missed point after. 37 yard attempt. Right hash mark. They can advance that one, and he picks it up, and he's going to try to advance it. Well, yeah, I guess that was wise. <laughs> and was sworn. <laughs> it's picked up or blocked by Matt Leonard and picked up by uh, David Bergeron, I believe. Well, Bergeron caught the uh, kickoff, so he's, he's, he's doing well on the special team. 3.36 to go in the big game. Cal leading Stanford 30-7. to Coming right back. This is a good day to be dressed up as a bear. <laughs> this is the only day. <laughs> Unless you're Mark Jensen, who's having his problems here, Martin. Hey, he's the only bear. Blocked field goal. He already missed two others and a point after. Bergeron returns it. Jensen, stay away. Don't try to make the tackle. Nothing good's happening for you today. He gets in <laughs> and gets hit and knocked down. Poor guy. He's on the bottom of the pile. Are they going to be partying on Telegraph and Shattuck tonight? Oh, I'm going to believe it. <laughs> Great look, by the way. By the guys in our truck, Ted Briggs producing, Tommy has a directing, the entire camera crew. They're getting ready to party here now. The guys are already chanting, give us the axe, give us the axe, give us the axe. Cal Bear supporters getting ready. Casey Moore on the last carry there as the clock begins to wind down. Casey Moore, Mr. Big Game, not today. Now Kyle Bowler's had the big game, a couple of touchdown passes. To LaShawn Ward LaShawn and Joe Igbert just running wild. Kyle Matters gone the whole way, quarterback to Stanford. Nice, nice catch by Alex Smith in traffic out to the 30 in the first down. Good hands. Smith with good hands. As I said, his dad is an NFL player, former NFL player. You know, you look at that, that's one of the things that's so perplexing and frustrating for Stanford. You you look at oh that was that was beautifully yeah. done. And you just the schemes are there. Occasionally the are you there. get it, but you just don't get it consistently yeah, enough. The schemes are there. They do have some talent. I mean, obviously Taylor Johnson is a great talent. LeSean Ward's a talent. They got some talent with offensive line, but hey, you got a freshman quarterback. Right. You've got to have somebody to make the decisions and pull the trigger. Play action for Matter. Throwing it out to Casey Moore. And that's a holding. You Incomplete. Can see that one. One of the big, that's Quame Harris with the hole on that one. That's going to go back for Stanford. Stanford offensive lineman out of Newark. Guy's an All-American possibility, Quame Harris. Yeah, He's been there a long time. Most athletic offensive lineman up front for Stanford. And they're starting to make some noise here in Berkeley. Give us the axe. On the offense, Taylor has previous spot, three first down. Well, it's nice, you know, one of the things is you look at LaShawn Ward there, he's had a, a great day, his final day, a couple of touchdown catches. Is that, uh, you know, they want to see a packed house here in Berkeley with regularity. Yeah, yeah. And that is one of the things that Tedford did allude to that surprised him. That when they started winning, and some of the, after some of their big wins, they came back home, crowds of like 28, 29,000. That was a surprise to me. Of course, at Oregon, they could, they're always sold out. 30 to 7, our score. 
Ryan Wells, the senior playing his final game with stiff nice arm. Spin, spin move. And out to the 36-yard line. Nice play. Gain of 16. And, and the beautiful thing you see about these kids at Stanford, they are fighting. They haven't quit. They're battling. Even Kyle Matter. I mean, here's a freshman. He's getting beat up and pushed around. There's a guy down on the field, an injured Stanford lineman. But they are really, oh, that's Tail Johnson that's down. And that it doesn't Johnson look good. is down, and I just hope this is not a serious injury. Basically, at a time of the game where the winner has long determined. since been yeah. decided. Yeah, Mike Montgomery is holding his breath right now at home, <laughs> and he expected to have uh, Tao training with him at, the, within a couple of days because they've got one more game, I think, back east, and then. Uh, when they come back, they only have one game in December. Let's see if we can see how he, he hurts himself. He's, He's trying to make a block the up right top. corner of here his screen. Here he is right here. Tail making the block. Oh, he's caught right there. It's a, hit a little bit by one of Cal's men. Kind of whiplashed his leg. Uh, I hate to say it, but it, it looked like. Yeah, Tail on the left side of the screen. Here. And here he is right there. That's right there. Hunter. That's Hunter. He got hit Randall in, Hunter. The, in the lower left leg. Uh, it looked like his foot was still planted. And boy, he is limping real. Yeah, he's not you know, able to put any weight on, on that, that left, left leg. leg. That left leg. Foot was planted, and he can't believe it. Big game. Yeah, I got two minutes left wait. for basketball. It makes you wonder whether. Maybe they should have just gotten him out of there. He and Luke Powell with, you know, on the other side of the coin, they're, they're, it's a rivalry game. They're trying to make something happen here. They're not going to win the game, but try to build on something for next season. So you can see both sides. Oh, that was almost intercepted. He had Emil read Powell. that one, had jumped on top of that one, and was ready to go. Jamil Powell was going to the house. <laughs> Earlier today, the big splash. Water polo, Cal versus Stanford. You saw Cal scoring first, Stanford scoring second, and well, Stanford won that game. All right. The Cardinal. Hey, Jameel Powell thought he was gone to the house. He just didn't catch the ball. Well, that scene it says it all. It says it all right there. Trey Freeman and the rest of the Cardinal players. This is not the way they wanted to go out. Matter complete, still flinging Grant Mason with a reception. He's part of the future of the program, freshman from Michigan. First loss for Stanford team in the big game in seven years. Seven years. Seven straight at once. Here's Tao. Tao. We're working on him. I really hope that this is nothing serious for him. He is such a good kid. You know, he's involved in a mentoring program. So between playing football and basketball, there's a young man yeah. that he's helping to mentor and, uh, you know, takes him out and helps him with schoolwork and stuff. I mean, he's just a great kid. And from San Diego, his sister is a student at Cal. There's a sack of matter. Nixon. Matt oh, Nixon. that's actually, that was Tom Canada. The man from Hancock, J.C. The senior got himself a sack. That's not bad on the stat list. He's got uh, 10 sacks on the season. Cal with 24 seniors who have less than a minute and a half left in their collegiate careers. Stanford will say goodbye to 16 of their seniors. But they're leaving with a winning season. And that's something that Cal hasn't been able to say in their whole tenure here. And those Boy, crutches are for Taylor Johnson. Crutches, uh, that's not good. There's Matter stepping up, and he's going to run with it. And saves his life wisely. Did not get the first down. And he's down. Matter's down. And there's Teo. Teo's moving off on crutches. Well, I'll tell you what, if that's a serious injury to either Matter or to Teo, it would really be the, the final crushing blow to you talk about a insult. horrendous season. Uh, injury added to insult. For Teo, it's already been a frustrating season for him. But uh, the guy loves to play football, says he loves basketball more. And really, it's hard for him to make a decision. But we can see that uh, he's hurt. 
There are the stats on Matter. Matter took a dive. There was, uh, it looks like their Cal fans on the other side, they were really getting ready. Yeah, they are to about to swarm the field here. So Swarm the field and go get the ax. I, I hope for his sake that the, the guy in the Stanford tree outfit is long gone because. <laughs> well, Matter is up on the sideline trying to shake it off. So that's the good news. They took off his yeah. helmet. Ryan Eklund is going to come in. He's a sophomore, six seven, out of Washington. There are the fans, ready to to swarm the field here. Cal students finally, finally, going to get their hands on the axe. Ryan Eklund, he's got some size. He's one of the biggest six, quarterbacks. Seven. Yeah, you're ever going to see. Out of Washington, how did he get away from the University of Washington? It's wonder. always about Washington, isn't it, Martin? <laughs> you have to wonder. <laughs> Alex Smith with the catch. We're under a minute here. And the Kyle Bowler. Got to be happy for Kyle. That guy pushed right, Jump on his back. That's just what he needs. That's <laughs> a first-round draft pick, maybe, in the NFL. He don't care. He's happy. I mean, he's going away finally with a big-game victory and a winning season. I mean, after the three years that he suffered through. After all the misery. He said, you know, the one thing about the losing is, I mean, it, it was horrible frustration. We got the uh, flags flying. and movement up front against Stanford but with with all of the frustration you know the winning is that much sweeter here's Remember 1997 yeah and of course this was at Stanford and there was a yeah hey you remember what happened at Miami Ohio with the game of Marshall last week I mean you, you, you that is not look at them they're all there on the edge of the field they're gonna swarm this field I mean this is not something I would like to be. I think the players are going to have to get off the field real quick. Uh, the security is gone. Forget about it. There's no way they're going to stop them from not rushing the field. And it's going to happen. Kyle Bowler, Jeff, Jeff Tedford, what a job he's done. Guy that's attention to detail, made a family atmosphere, communicating with all these players, giving them confidence that they can make it happen, and they've done it. Changing the attitude around completely. 25 seconds left. This could be the final play. And I tell you, it's going to be a, this a is mass of humanity attacking the field here. It's going to be a scene like the uh, NC2A basketball championship when the fans swarm the court. Only this is a 120-yard football field. Complete to Wells. And there's Bowler enjoying his final few moments. It's all finally come to fruition. And he's going to leave Cal with a victory in the big game. I wonder if they'll carry Tedford off. If they'll carry him on this. I, they won't. Have, they can't. I mean, they, where they they're going to carry, carry, carry him. There won't be any room. But they could pass him around the they stadium. <laughs> My goodness. And the Stanford players, they have to be a little bit concerned. They're looking around at all these guys, the fans that are going to start pouring out of the stands. How are they going to get back through the fans to their locker? There was the Gatorade splash for Jeff Gatorade. He won't get the ride, but he'll get the old Gatorade splash. I'll tell you what, if you look behind the Cal bench here, it's all fans. It's all fans. I mean, it's just. They're on the bench. Yeah, they They have just taken over the side. The band is on the, no, the band is on the bench. <laughs> no, we did that already 20 years ago. The band is on the bench, my goodness. Only at Cal, only in the big game. Well, let's just hope uh, all the Stanford guys get out of here safely. You know, I, you know, if this was Florida, Florida State, Michigan, Ohio State, they would have a problem. But, you know, I, this is more of a friendly rivalry. And Cal gets the ball. And it ends in fitting fashion for the Cal Bears. Tom Canada causing the fumble. They're on the field, but the, the game is not over yet. 11 seconds. They didn't learn from 82. I think they're just going to. It's gonna, not over yet. I think it is over. They're going to call it a day. The <laughs> officials are trying to get out of here. They're, the fans have taken the field. The game's not over. It's still 11 seconds yet. They can score three touchdowns in 11 seconds. Well, maybe uh, not. And they, they, they did wind the clock, and they, they just set it to 0-0. Zero, zero. Now they're really hitting the field. Unbelievable. Only in the big game. Only at Memorial Stadium. Well, it happened two years ago. 97 at Stanford. And the Axe officially has changed hands. We're looking for the axe. I'm trying to find it. Now, there it is. They're going to bring it out. And they've got it so everybody can see it. 
And the Cal Bears behind Kyle Bowler and Joe Igber finish the season at 7 and 5. Their first winning season since 93. The axe belongs to them. Well deserved, Jeff Tetrick. If you don't get a ride off on their shoulders, hey, we'll give it to you verbally. You did a great job, you and your staff. Bob Gregory, the defensive coordinator, outstanding. And that kid, Kyle Bowler, you got to love it for him. He's going to get the ball off. All right, yeah. Three years. Guy comes out of high school, one of the most highly recruited quarterbacks in the country. Comes to Cal. Three frustrating, losing years, lost confidence in himself. But stayed with him, almost quit playing football altogether. He said he, he never stopped believing in himself. He would see guys play in the NFL and say, you know, I can be that good. But this ain't fun. But yeah, this wasn't ain't fun. fun. And yeah. now it's fun. Now it is fun. And, uh, and, and he may have a great pro career because he certainly got the arm. And you know he's got the heart, the perseverance, and the ability. Uh, You've got to say, hey, if this guy's going to be picked up first, second round in the, in the NFL draft. Cal fans finally get to touch the axe. They hadn't seen this thing in, what, eight years? we got the cannon going off, the fireworks, and it is going to be quite a night in Berkeley. It's an old last of the 105th edition of the big game. Cal winning it 30 to 7. Thanks for joining us. Stay tuned. We're coming back with our final thoughts. It's a final. Cal beats Stanford 30 to 7 in the big game. Martin, tell us straight that goalpost there. They've got it surrounded there. I mean, look That's... at the, the, the security around the goalpost because they didn't want the fans to pull it down and somebody could possibly get injured. They tried to assault. They made an assault on that goalpost. But the security guys were able to, to fight them off. But, man, they've been really going at it right in what here. Happened? Right in there. Those fans are determined. We're going to tear that goalpost down. But you see a whole cadre of security. We were hoping to uh, get down to Mike Schumann on the field, but uh, he's somewhere in the midst of the bedlam. We did have an opportunity earlier in the week to talk with some of the Cal players. We asked them, what would it feel like? What kind of a dream would it be to get your hands on the ax, finally? This week, I'm sure I'll be laying in bed and, and just, it'll go over my head over and over. I'll be going through plays and, and hopefully the, the sign of the ax, you know, waving it, you know, to my parents, showing them finally we got it back. And it'll just be so special. It'll be, uh, I think it'll be very emotional. I think it's going to be the locker room talk, the weight room talk, on the field talk. You know, everyone's going to be talking about it. I've, I've imagined it for four years now, so. <laughs> I, I, I hope to, to get a reality of it this time, but you know, it'll be great. It, it'll, you know, it'll be a great moment. Well, they will have a chance to grab that ax, assuming they can find it somewhere in the mayhem down on the field, but it is just, it's a cluster of humanity. Yeah, Mike Schumann is down there somewhere. He was gonna grab the winning coach. Hey, forget that. He can't even get across the field. It's amazing that so many years uh, and now to get it uh, it's got to be a great feeling it makes it even more important yes 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 thank you coach Tedford the fans eating it up after a 30 to 7 victory Here's the right back to Berkeley well so much for security Martin uh, the goalpost <laughs> is coming down you just knew it was gonna happen it was just a mass of humanity those students were determined we're going to take this goalpost down, and you see it. Hopefully, nobody will get injured. I mean, look at those three guys up there putting their weight to it. But, you know, those goalposts weigh a lot, and that's why the schools don't want to see one pulled down because somebody could get hurt and be a lot of liability. Well, I'll tell you what, yeah, it looks like it's about to tip right now after all of the frustration of the past seven years. There she blows. I don't want to be the guy on the top side of that. There she blows, as they say. Well, you know, they're having some fun. And, uh, we're having fun. We're I mean, this is the big game. Time. What an atmosphere. 
if nobody gets hurt, this exactly. is one of the greatest adventures that you can have. And the Cal Athletic Department will gladly uh, pay for some new goalposts after all they've endured over the past few years. But they do finally win it 30-7, to and they get a 7-5 and five season for Jeff Tedford in his first year. We'll take a look at some of the highlights in case you joined us late. But it all started off, actually, with Stanford, yep. Teo Johnson, a touchdown catch. And, of course, Teo left the game in the last two minutes with a knee injury. It looked like a knee injury, so we hope that he'll be all right. LaShawn Ward starred in the first half. Kyle Bowler hooking up with him on a touchdown of 31 yards to tie the game at seven apiece. And after a field goal of 23 yards by Mark Jensen to make it 10-7, Bowler goes up top again to Ward in the back of the end zone. 22 yards, extra point, no good, but it was 16-7, and little Joe Aker put on a show. Huge game, 142 yards in the first half. He would go on and rush for a big game record, about 240-some yards, a big game single-day rushing record. And for here Joe is Aker. Jameel Powell with the only score of the second half off the punt return, early third quarter, and he takes it to the house, 84 yards. And another one of the seniors, Kyle Bowler, Jameel Joe. Powell, Joe Igberg, if you're big a games, senior, yeah. this is the way to go out. The way, the way they wanted to go out with the victory and with the winning season, and they can look at it and say, hey, we helped turn this program around because they can see that Jeff Tedford has it on the right path. We were the, the class that made it happen and helped turn it around. So Cal goes 7-5. and five. They finally get the ax back. If you're Stanford and Buddy Tevens. Boy, a tough first year, 2-9. and nine. Where do you go from here? Well, they get one year. You get one year free. Now, next year, they're going to have to pick it up. It's going to be a tough one for them, I tell you, because Buddy Tevens and Stanford, they've got to recruit, especially a quarterback. And you can see they did take the goal post down. That'll do it for our entire ABC7 crew. And Martin Wyatt, Mike Schumann, I'm Larry Beal. Thanks for watching, everybody. So long.